lovely, lovely imps. Today, we are doing a brand spanking new Drama Mama. For those of you who are new to my channel and who have never seen a Drama Mama before, a Drama Mama is basically a deep dive into something that is blowing up, usually on the internet, usually in some corner of pop culture, and generally something that is very controversial, that's generating a lot of buzz and conversation. And today, we have a big one, okay? A very important one that's very relevant uh, to this channel generally, but also that ties into a lot of other conversations we've had on Drama Mama before. The goal of every Drama Mama is to make sure that one, we establish what happened to the best of our ability. Two, we make sure we have as many receipts as we possibly can. And then three, at the end, once we've looked at everything that we possibly can within reason, I will decide what I think about the situation and invite you to do the same. The goal of Drama Mama is to combat the endless game of telephone, the constant rumor spreading all over the internet, and instead, bring you a show that does a deep dive on a topic so that you can stay in the loop without feeling like you're just, uh, uh, without participating in just a pointless drama uh, uh, rumor mill. The goal of Drama Mama is to elevate the drama to something that can actually be informative, that we can walk away with something. And today, we have to talk about Bethesda, okay? Bethesda is a gaming company, a very, very big gaming company. In fact, they're often uh, uh, more commonly referred to in the corporate world as ZeniMax Bethesda, because ZeniMax, of course, merged with Bethesda. Bethesda is a very famous gaming company. They made games such as Fallout, The Elder Scrolls, all of them, you know, Skyrim, Oblivion, Morrowind, all those types of games. And they've also got another really, really, really big game coming out soon known as Starfield. And what has happened today with Bethesda is that a very serious allegation of discrimination, of discrimination that goes beyond just a, an incident of like a, 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 a bad Apple employee, but discrimination that that carried up to the higher levels of corporate against trans pe against a trans person uh, that has yet to be resolved by the corporation. That's what we're going to be talking about today. And uh, a number of other channels have covered this um, and talked about it on the surface. And we're actually going to... Uh, this is not what we usually do. We usually don't pull on other people's coverage. However, today we're going to make an exception because um, a channel that uh, has a very high reputation uh, uh, for holding game companies to task has spoken on this issue. And I'm very interested what they have to say. That, of course, being James Stephanie Sterling of the Jimquisition. So we are going to first... Take a look at what uh, James Stephanie Sterling has to say about this issue. And then we are going to look through the receipts ourselves. Now, this is probably going to be a slightly shorter Drama Mama. For those of you Drama Mama veterans out there, you guys know that the Drama Mamas sometimes go really long. Well, this one might be a little bit shorter than usual. Uh, and the reason for that is because... The person who brought the allegations put all of the evidence in one place, which is incredibly, incredibly helpful. And I wish that that would happen more often. Uh, so we will be looking at that video afterwards, and then we will be passing uh, a judgment on the drama at the end. So I hope that you will all get comfortable, get settled in, uh, and join me as we dive into the story of uh, alleged severe discrimination against a trans person, an employee who worked very hard uh, for Bethesda and ZeniMax. Um, one thing that I want to say before we dive into this, many of you will know I love video games. I'm a big, a big gamer. I love playing video games. I, I spend a lot of time. They're probably 
video games is probably my main uh, uh, passion with regard to art consumption. I absolutely adore video games, and I talk about them all the time on this channel. Um, they're a intrinsic part of who I am. Uh, the artistry of gaming has changed my life so many times I couldn't even possibly summarize it here. And I've also talked about gaming a lot, not just on this channel, but in this series. Some of you will recall that we covered the fallout that happened um, at uh, Activision Blizzard, another gaming giant, a couple of years ago. Um, if For those who don't recall, um, numerous and widespread allegations of sexual assault, sexual harassment, um, mistreatment of female employees, outright prejudice, um, uh, 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 intimidation of former employees were alleged against, um, against Activision Blizzard. And when I say widespread, I mean widespread. Like this was a huge issue. And that drama mama um, uh, took us a really long time to get through. Um, and I think that it points out something that's important, which is the gaming industry is in a really, really rough spot. Some of the biggest corporations in the gaming industry um, have been shown to be actively engaged in covering up the worst behavior of some of the people in power in their company. The gaming industry has gotten away with some of the most absurd labor violations that we've ever seen. Um, uh, Blizzard Activision alone, of course, has repeatedly uh, 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 had evidence brought against it of just horrific mistreatment, even sometimes of veteran members. Now, uh, some of you will recall from when we talked about this in the past that um, some of the core members uh, of Activision Blizzard, who were a part of Blizzard before Blizzard even merged with Activision, people who were uh, responsible for the core pieces of some of their most famous games, um, for example, Chris Metzen, have, have opened up and said that the work environment there was so terrible um, that it caused them long-term psychological harm. Um, the gaming industry has a lot of problems. The gaming industry is in a really bad place right now. And the gi mega giant corporations right now seem to feel like they can get away with all kinds of bad behavior. Um, uh, everything from promoting explicit addiction and gambling mechanics in their video games directly to young consumers, all the way to sexual impropriety at the highest levels of these corporations. And it's interesting because they seem to fall back on one key uh, 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 defense. And they usually don't say this explicitly, but it's uh, often brought up uh, as a way to dismiss the severity of these things, which is, it's just video games. They're video, they're toys. It's just video games, guys. But it's not just video games, is it? Video games as an industry is a multi-billion dollar industry. It is one of the biggest industries in the world. And the people who work in that industry are working jobs, actual jobs that take their blood, sweat, and tears to actually accomplish. So it's not just games. One of the things that we've seen come up over and over again when we cover gaming companies is this, um, is this idea that, that workers should be thankful that they get to work on a product that so many people would love to work on. Oh, you are you get to make video games. What are you complaining about? And of course the answer is, what? That's insane. The idea that, that, that simply working on a video game in and of itself is a privilege that should make you look the other way at bad behavior, that should make you look the other way at blatant abuses, that should make you look the other way at horrific exploitation of workers and consumers is of course an absurd argument. But unfortunately, it seems to have a certain amount of value for these companies when it comes to the general public. A lot of people seem to think, and by the way, this is an issue we see in other industries as well. This happens with movies. Um, in the entertainment industry, 
you get this attitude a lot. Well, what are you talking about? You get to be, you're, a, you're in the movies. You work in the movie business. Of course, they're looking the other way to the fact that most work in the movie industry, in the movie business is grueling labor. Like sometimes grueling physical labor. Even if you're, even if you're not one of the people actually lugging heavy equipment around or building a set out of wood or, uh, or putting together machinery for a stunt. Even if you're not one of those people, you're working a job that requires an incredible amount of work. You can be mistreated. So this defense needs to be brought, you know, needs to be called out in advance because I'm sure that there's going to be some comments on these videos that we're going to see uh, where people want to uh, dismiss these things because, well, it's the gaming industry. Shouldn't you just be happy that you work in the gaming industry? And the answer is no, of course not. Work is work and bad behavior is bad behavior. So without any further ado, fireworks still, fireworks still bombarded, never ending bombardment. Oh my goodness. Um, let's Without any further ado, now that the boom is out of the way, let's react to James Stephanie Sterling, the Jimquisition, talking about this situation. Let's do it. <laughs> Who's looking forward to that there Starfield, eh? I am, I love video games. Hi there, I'm James Stephanie Sterling and I love video games. Do you love video games? That's awesome, because I love video games too. We're gonna talk about a video game, which I love to do, and it's a video game that I'm just sure I'm gonna love because it's a video game and I love video games. This isn't about Zenimax and Bethesda mistreating a worker. Just video I worked at ZeniMax Online Studios from October of 2018 to the beginning of May 2022. Is is the video audio too loud? I apologize. I will turn the video audio down. I apologize in advance for any audio irregularities. Um, I had a capture card burn out at the last minute before stream, so some of the audio levels are a little bit off. Um, I'll attempt to, uh, equalize it a little bit. I apologize. In January of 2021, my boss outed me as a trans woman. Eventually it led to ending my career there. I gotta tell you, if there's one game I'm hey for more than anything else right now, it's Starfield. The hit upcoming game from Bethesda that's going to be critically acclaimed and get top review scores, whether it's good or not, which is how you know it's gonna be good. You could say I've got... Star Fever! <laughs> Again, I made it pretty clear during our initial private conversation that I needed this to be casual and within my control. Elphaba reveals my new work photo to the team via sharing her screen, outing me during the last few minutes of our morning scrum. I'm shocked. Those who are participating in the meeting began talking about my new picture after it was revealed. Elphaba ends the morning scrum before I have the opportunity to say anything at all. I was forced to come out via text chat very awkwardly and in no way how I had imagined it. I was devastated for the rest of that day. After all the delays, the waiting, it feels like Todd- That is a really, really weird and terrible thing to do. A, a manager just throwing up uh, a picture that was sent to you in confidence for no reason to your entire team when you haven't come out formally is not only terrible, but is also dangerous. Because you don't actually always know, like, we don't know who those other people on the team are, and you may not have had a time to prepare for being outed to an entire team of people. Do you know what a scrum is? That's what this is done during? Yeah, a scrum is basically like a, it's like a quick get together. If you've ever, uh, you know, been on a job where you get together and go, okay, everybody, here's what we got to do for the day. This, this, and this. Okay, everybody, let's go. That's what a scrum is. So 
this happening in a scrum is like an incredibly, incredibly weird thing to do. It's, it's, it, that's already on the surface, a really weird thing to like put up someone's photo, uh, uh, on the screen to your whole team during like a, okay guys, here's what we got to do for the day type thing. And I can complete, for those who don't know, I myself am trans. Um, maybe I should take an opportunity to tell a little personal story here. Uh, when I first discovered that I was trans, uh, I mentioned this all the time, but I grew up in an extreme Christian cult. Most of my family was still to some degree involved in that cult when I discovered that I was trans. Uh, I told two people in my life. One of them ended up leaking that information uh, to another family member, a family member who was incredibly hostile. That family member ended up telling every single member of my family and then ended up beginning a chain of events which ended in me being completely and utterly disowned. I mean, I was told by my father at the time, change your last name, you're a disgrace to the family, we don't want anything to do with you specifically because I was trans. So, outing someone is an absolutely uh, unbelievably cruel thing to do. And also, it can be incredibly dangerous for that person. It can have, uh, it could result in violence in extreme cases, but it can also result in cascading uh, uh, financial and social repercussions, which is why it is well understood that you should not out someone unless they tell you you can. And you should especially not do it in this way. It absolutely is an act of violence. Yes, I, I, would, agree, I would agree that depending on context, obviously, sometimes there's an accident. Sometimes somebody does it by accident. But in my case, it was not an accident. It was not done by accident. It was done explicitly. They told the family member with the most power to be able to hurt me because they felt that that family member needed to know. And then that family member ended up hurting me over and over again. I don't want to make this about me. Uh, some of my old school fans of the stream will know that I have been physically threatened with death over being trans, that I was dis uh, disowned that I was completely, my college career was completely destroyed because of the actions that um, trans hating family members took. These are things that are very personal to me, but I need you guys to understand what I want all my viewers to understand is that outing someone against their will, especially if they've trusted you in confidence is a horrible thing to do and it should be avoided at all costs. Let's continue. Howard's Magnus Anus is at last a real tangible thing that's actually going to come out. All the video game news sites are talking about it as it's easily the biggest and most important thing involving Bethesda Softworks that's happened in the past week. I mean, has anything else of note happened? Uh... <sighs> Can't think of anything, no. Just in the past 24 hours, the top games media outlets have been a buzz with Starfield coverage. And since we've been taking a lighter, less depressing, far more apolitical tone on the Jimquisition this year, I thought it'd be edifying to look over this avalanche of hot goss and juicy news to aid me in my goal of demonstrating exactly why Starfield will be the biggest game of a currently undetermined period of time. Let's start with the absolutely wild sales predictions that Microsoft had for Starfield, because not only is it a great indicator of of just how massive this game is expected to be, it seriously does feed into a point I've made many times about the often absurdly over-optimistic sales expectations that publishers have for their games. The kind of expectations that see companies routinely express disappointment in a title selling below expectations when they only sell several bloody million copies. So yeah. Yeah, this is a thing that the gaming company that gaming companies do all the time. They constantly ridiculously overhype their games. Uh, and then <laughs> you want to know what's even crazier about that? A lot of these gaming companies tie bonuses to the performance of a game, either in reviews or in sales copies or in both. And they set the standards so high that, oops, you didn't meet the impossible standards. Guess you don't get your bonus. 
Microsoft expected Starfield to sell over 10 million copies, not across all platforms, but on PS5 alone. In a four-hour video, Leona Farron, a former developer for The Elder Scrolls Online, provided a highly detailed account with receipts detailing a pattern of shockingly transphobic behavior at Bethesda Softworks. Now, in fairness to Microsoft, a game selling over 10 million copies, even on a single platform, is far from unheard of. In fact, The Last of Us Part 2, a PS5 exclusive, has indeed shifted 10 mil. Perhaps the more shocking revelation in retrospect is the fact that Microsoft still elected to cancel the PS5 version in spite of its prediction after the Xbox maker acquired Bethesda in 2022. Not quite sure if it's as shocking as, say, holding a trans employee's medical care hostage to pressure her into leaving the company and signing away the possibility of hitting it with a discrimination lawsuit on the way out. I can, I can come back to work tomorrow. Um, I got everything resolved, but I wanted to see what you would want me to do. Um, also, but I also saw that all my products were shifted out to. Um, we did some a, a sanity check today because it was the middle. It was the middle of the week. You had said you were going to be out all week, so um, we needed a plan for plan for that accordingly. Because of things just being a bit uh, kind of sporadic, like of when you're taking time off. We are going to go over all of these receipts after we watch this video. Uh, so don't worry. We're going to look at all of these receipts up close. Um, for you especially, it's pretty important to get those products hooked up. MS believes it can recuperate any potential losses from Starfield's Xbox exclusivity via Game Pass subscriptions and a subsequent increase in Xbox sales. The decision to cut the PS5 out of Starfield's release has been a controversial one, of course, but its developer has since revealed to be a big believer in exclusivity, as it demonstrated when it kept Leona exclusive to her own set of duties away from the rest of the Elder Scrolls Online team. So committed to exclusion, I mean exclusivity, it made the tools Leona needed to do her job exclusive to our old pre-transition name. That is an insane level of pettiness. That is horrible. What the fuck? consequently locking her out of accounts for months and undermining her ability to perform her duties. Anyway, back to the big news of the week. The Starfields. These delectable details regarding Starfield came out thanks to the FTC case against Microsoft's acquisition of Activision Blizzard, another company with Oh a yeah, I forgot to mention that. I should bring that up. Uh, for those who don't know, um, Microsoft is likely going to be able to purchase Activision Blizzard, a company we just mentioned just a, just a little bit ago in the intro. I, I totally forgot to mention that. Microsoft uh, is basically engaged in one of the most aggressive wars in, that we've seen uh, in the history of gaming since like the old Sega versus Nintendo days. Uh, and probably, and at this point, there's way more money on the line than there was during that time. So uh, yeah, n uh, 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 Xbox, which is owned by Microsoft, is basically trying to make as many games as possible exclusives to uh, force mass adoption of the Xbox. And the way that they're doing that is by using their insane Microsoft money to purchase up every other company that would otherwise make games for other consoles. In fact, um, it's gotten pretty wild to the degree that there are like emails, <laughs> emails from the executives saying, uh, yeah, I'll do whatever it takes to kill Sony. Shit like that. That's not a word-for-word -word quote, but that's the sort of thing that has been coming out in this trial. And initially, the FTC ruled that it was not legal, that it was uh, anti-competitive action, what Microsoft was engaging in. However, um, that has currently been overruled. So it appears as though Microsoft is going to be allowed to purchase Activision Blizzard, one of the world's biggest gaming companies, and presumably make a lot of their games Xbox exclusives. It's incredibly interesting, but also very dirty tactics that we're witnessing. Huge amount of monopolization going on in the gaming industry right now, regardless of the exclusivity struggle, just a massive amount of, of monopolization going on.
history of prejudiced and discriminatory behaviour towards its employees. What is it with Microsoft and picking up scumbags? They're as bad as me when I've been drinking and desperate in Leeds City Centre. It's all I had. It's, 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 and it's a new process, so it's not like I'm doing something that comes natural. I'm trying to be innovative constantly. I can see that, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely part of this position. Um, you are not the only one who has felt like this in the career of this type of position, um, by no means. Like some people are built for this, that's how their personality is. Um, others can do it for two to three years and then it's the same thing. It's actually the same type of comments you have. Balance is needed, right? That's amazing. That's amazing that we should come to this right now because um, remember how I just said that these gaming companies will often basically say, well, you know, it's a tough life. Maybe you're just not cut out for it. You know, it's the gaming industry. You should be honored to be working here. Yeah, it's hard, but some people, maybe they're just not made for it. You know, you should really just stop complaining. We're the ones who are making you break your back because we're the executives and the leaders who are making these calls for our own personal enrichment. But yeah, you know, maybe you should just be more thankful because you get to work on video games, you know? It's amazing that I said that, and now we're hearing recordings of managers doing that exact same thing in real time. Absolutely incredible. Absolutely amazing, actually. Right, like, if you are continuing to be on this team, we've got to find balance somehow. Um, if if you are overwhelmed with the amount of you know doctor's appointments or if they're asking you to not do something for three to four hours i just well to take the time um which is not i'm yes gonna affect my career yeah it's a, a different position like a different role um not that I want you off the team, like I chose people to be on this team for a reason. <laughs> you are always, you know, having to go to the doctors frequently, or they're asking you to not do something for a few hours or whatever is not good. One other important hmm. Bethesda story. Hmm, that's really weird. Hey, you're at this position that has these benefits and you're using them. Oh no! You're performing perfectly fine, but mm, this thing is annoying me, and I don't want you to use your benefits in the way that you are, so, mmm. Stories have been covered this week. Mmm. Oh, here's one. Fans are concerned that the game's only going to run at 30 frames per second on consoles. If there's one thing that unites the gaming community more than anything else, it's low frame rates. There's nothing more outrageous in gamer circles, not even management outing someone's transition to her co-workers and protesting her right to change her name, insisting she stick with her dead name to avoid the technical issues she'd been having with her logging in. I mean, that's trivial compared to a computer game not running at 60 FPS, isn't it? God, I know. I'm being sarcastic, but I also know the dwindling percentage of hardcore gamers that still watch me all just nodded in agreement, and it makes me want to be sick into a little bag. You, you cancelled the team meeting. I told you I was going to come out of the closet at uh, the same day of the meeting, and then I was pressured over Slack to quickly find an alternative because everyone had seen my new work photo. This was devastating. Yes. I don't know how else to put that. I mean, I don't, I don't understand. The whole thing makes me sick, really. The game industry, I mean, just in general. You know, I'm trying, I'm really trying to avoid this series. How, how, I want to under, I want to know how you don't understand that just dropping someone's photo to your team during a scrum and not letting that person come out to the team on their own terms, on their own footing, to be able to have a conversation with their teammates, and instead just dropping a photo so that a bunch of members of the team can just start gossiping about it. 
I don't know how you cannot understand what's wrong with that situation. That is blat there's a there are numerous blatant issues. It's not just poor leadership. It's hurtful and it completely disrespects the agency of someone on your team who is in a vulnerable position during a period of history in which people are absolutely psychotic about trans people. Let's not forget the context in which all of this is happening. The context is in America when a trans person getting a single set of promotional uh, 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 beer cans with Bud Light has set off months of conservative derangement, has, has led this trans person for a single beer ad, uh, just appearing in a beer ad, has led to them getting repeatedly harassed in person, threat their life threatened, them being obsessively stalked by basically every single major talking head on the entire uh, conservative side of media. And you can't understand how putting your employee in that situation is bad. You can't understand. You don't understand that. You don't understand how putting them in a situation where you take all their agency away and you leave their, their team open to all speculation. You don't allow them to have decisions over that. You just drop a picture of them to the team. You don't understand that. You don't understand how that might be disturbing. Jesus. Jesus being the depression fest it turned into a few years ago following the constant stream of stories outlining abuse and discrimination that seemingly riddles the video game's business at every fucking level. I even hit upon a revelation recently. Ever since my video on the historical context of the term JRPG, I've, like, just not wanted to talk about the usual grim misery of games. Shaking my head in fucking despair every week at layoffs, executives being slime balls, the corrupt excesses of the economic system, and systemic abuse is not what I want my job to be anymore. This year has seen some of the most fun I've had in years making videos on more varied and interesting subject matter. Like when I looked at the news the other week and saw multiple layoff stories, I felt a pit in my stomach because it felt like I had to go back. Back to the topics that bring me and the audience no joy. Back to the videos that are gross and miserable and neither fun nor edifying. I don't want to go back. Of course, people don't want to be laid off either, and their situation is far more serious than some comfy little content creator doing a cry because they gotta do something they don't like on their silly little video series. And trans people don't want to be outed, to have managers glibly speak their dead name and demand its continued use, to be excluded and told their reliability and that their new identity is causing chaos. Oh, and I think you'll find that now that we've dropped all sarcasm, it's time. It's time to do something. You know what it is. Oh my. something quite poetic about that clip being pre-Stephanie. Your focus is everywhere else but on the job. It's definitely not. Okay. Okay, that's good to know. Um, and you being concerned about creating another chaotic situation, that's not for you to be concerned about. My job is to, hear, is to be here to clear that chaos. And no matter what that means, that's what my job is. It's Oswald. job. It's HR. It's IT. It's to unblock you so you can do your job. One always has to be careful when reporting on allegations, even ones as detailed and backed up as the charges Leona has leveled against Bethesda. Believing victims is the prime directive. But any reporter must still employ their own judgment when a situation involves folks they don't personally know. 
As we found out last year with the lengthy saga of Helena Taylor and Platinum Games, sometimes a case is more complex than it first appears. And should one choose to pick a side, as I most certainly have in this case, you gotta accept you're sticking your neck out on trust. Having said that, I'll tell you what's made this particular situation utterly compelling. The idea something as simple as a person changing their name could throw Bethesda into anarchy is one of the most believable Yep, that is, that is, that is what I was about. I was literally just thinking that. I was gonna think, if, first of all, it's bullshit. The idea that changing your name destroys an entire system is complete and utter bullshit. As we all know, these, these companies employ thousands of people. People get married and change their names on a regular basis. People have all kinds of changes on a regular basis. It is complete and utter bullshit that there's some kind of complete chaos when somebody decides to tra change their name. But it is interesting that despite the fact that they have thousands of employees who inevitably certainly get married and change their names, that a trans person changing their name all of a sudden is creating chaos. Isn't that interesting? Now, if it is actually true that Bethesda of Zenimax um, actually is so incompetent that their systems, their uh, security systems, their back-end systems don't have any way to change your na their change anyone's name. You can't change your name in that system. That is more laughable than anything because let let me tell you, when I worked in IT, we had ways to change people's usernames in the system, and it wasn't very complicated. We had an entire department who could you could just call and they would do that type of shit for you. Gayfesh says, I managed Active Directory and other work accounts for a company of over 600 employees, and I can tell you that name changes were routine and easy as pie. Yeah, basically, this is bullshit. And if it's not bullshit, that's an indictment of Bethesda as a company that should be concerning all the way to the level of their investors. If their back-end infrastructure is so weak that it cannot handle a simple name change. Yeah, you need to fire your IT head. Yeah. allegations I've ever heard in my life because Bethesda is just that bloody incompetent. The company couldn't even handle giving people canvas fucking bags. Of course it tracks. Oh my god, the canvas bags thing. Oh my god, that was such a long time ago. The canvas bag situation was so funny. Do you guys remember? Do you guys remember when Bethesda shipped out novelty helmets that were growing mold? They had like toxic mold in the uh, padding for these novelty fallout helmets and a bunch of people got sick and they had to be recalled. That they can't handle the technicalities of a name change. It's the kind of thick headed back. You don't believe me? Trust me. Look it up. Look it up stupid display of terminal inability that I've come to expect from a company so thoroughly run by imbeciles I could dedicate an entire video solely to their ineptitude, which I have already done. Obviously. People change names all the time. It's hardly surprising that Bethesda wouldn't know how to deal with it. I mean, Jesus, carpet munching Christ. What does this company do when someone gets married? Do their computers just explode? The absolute state of that legendarily ineffectual company never ceases to amaze me, despite the consistent demonstration that Bethesda's a complete rectal circus. For sanity's sake, I've tried to keep this video from going too dark. I laid out in my Hogwarts video exactly how fucking terrifying it is to be a trans person right now, and I don't want to put me yep. or you through that again. You know, I really wanted to talk about fucking Exo Primal this week. I have shit to say about it. Instead, we have the fucking ghoulish concept of a company holding somebody's medical care to ransom in order to kick her off the job because they were too fucking stupid to understand simple concepts like name changes or new photo IDs. God, the sheer farce of it would be funny if it wasn't so fucking ghastly. But still, Starfield's publicity machine has kicked into high gear, so expect any of the company's misdeeds to be conveniently swept under the same rug that's covering Activision's abuse of its employees, Ubisoft's protection of sex abusers, the industry's crunch and financial exploitation of disabled people, and sorry, should I just shut up and let you be hyped for Starfield? Okay, sorry, I'll do that. So in September of 2021, 
I contacted Bethesda Corporate because I felt like the studio's human resources was not taking my issues seriously. I shared with them everything that I shared with you, the recordings, screenshots, everything. Um, they responded by viewing me as a liability that they needed to get rid of. And it was also at this time that I was put under management with Oswald. Um, Thankfully, thankfully, because under his management, I blew it the fuck up. I wasn't being blocked anymore. And my velocity shot through the roof because I was working for someone who didn't care that I was trans. So I had my surgeries scheduled for March of 2022 and July of 2022. My surgeries were going to come in two parts. Um, I needed to have both surgeries done. Um, I couldn't have the first surgery without the second one. It would have been very unhealthy for me. They would have been leaving screwdrivers in me and shit. They, they need those back. <laughs> um, but like, I mean, that's, it would have been putting my health at risk to have one surgery and not the other. I needed both. But then in January of 2022, I was put under a performance improvement plan because Alphaba was allowed by corporate to do my yearly review. We are going to watch through uh, uh, as much of, of uh, this video afterwards um, as we can. We're going to get as much of it in as we can before we pass any sort of judgment but I'm glad that we're seeing some of this in advance. I'm just letting you know we are going to go watch this. It's a really long video, so we are probably going to watch it on a slightly elevated speed um, just so that we can actually get through it before I pass out from exhaustion. Um, but I want to make sure that we see the receipts and we hear them for ourselves because I think it's important that this story gets coverage. And she gave me straight ones across the board. She said I didn't do my work. She said that I was rude in meetings, that I was a, made inappropriate comments in public workplace forums, dozens of vague statements that were criticisms of my work ethic and character, uh, all of which were lies. But corporate saw me as a liability, so that didn't matter. It was a way to get rid of me. In the same conversation, I was pulled into a group meeting with human resources that included Zenimax Online Studios Human Resources and Bethesda Corporates Human Resources. And they extended to me a one-time offer wherein if I agreed to resign and release them from any potential discrimination lawsuit, they would pay for my COBRA premiums. Holy... They were holding Oh my God. That's literally, that is, that is so dirty. We recognize that your manager was, was giving you ones because you were trying to deal with a medical issue, but it's a special medical issue that we want to discriminate against you on. So here's the deal. We'll, we'll, you resign and we'll pay your Cobra. For those who don't know what Cobra is, Cobra is a thing in America where, um, if you leave your job, um, America's really, really crazy about healthcare in a bad way. Um, and basically there is a period of time in which you can register for new healthcare. That period of time is in November. Um, everybody, it's like, it's like being in a high school, except it's about your, it's about life and death. And, uh, if you leave your job outside of that registration period, um, uh, there's a law that basically says, well, um, you can still have your healthcare, um, and it has to be within a certain range of costs. So like it can't, if you leave a company and you're gonna lose your healthcare from that company, uh, there's this law that kicks in called COBRA where you can, you can purchase 
uh, uh, coverage at a discount. And by discount, I mean it will be way more expensive than whatever it was that you were paying at that job. Like, way more expensive. But you still technically have coverage. Um, so what they were saying is, we'll pay for your COBRA coverage as long as you leave and also sign a paper that says you'll never accuse us of discrimination. That is disgusting behavior. Just remember, human resources is exactly what it says. You are the resource they are attempting to man manage. Human resources works to minimize the damage that humans can do to a corporate interest. Always remember that, all of you, no matter what industry you're in, human resources is not your friend. Their job is to minimize the damage that can be done by human resources. They are not your friends and they are always working for corporate. My surgeries hostage to coerce me into resigning. I refused. The video, as I mentioned, is four hours long. Uh, there was no way I could do justice to it in a Jimquisition length video, um, but it paints a very clear picture. If you recognize the patterns, if you recognize the signs, if you've seen this before, or you've heard enough of the stories. Now, to a lot of cis people, I fully understand the to some of them, what they've seen in this video, even what some of them may see in the entire four hours, would have them shrug and say they don't see the problem. But I've experienced it myself in this job and almost every trans person I know has experienced it. The sudden change in perception, the sudden change in attitude, the sudden change with regards to your apparent performance. Yep. Um, this happens so much. And also happens to gay people too, not just trans people. When gay people get outed and then all of a sudden people start treating them weird in the workplace, their, their boss starts giving them bad reviews and all of a sudden they get shipped off to another place or outright fired, pressured to leave in one way or another. It's pretty, it's pretty ridiculous and also well-documented. As I say, I've experienced it myself. I've talked about it on this show. Uh, the people that suddenly thought I was being too rude in my game reviews, the people that saw me do things that I've done for the entirety of the 10 year career I've had um, in these videos, uh, they've seen me do things and they've now taken them as signs that I'm having some sort of mental breakdown. Um, we know what this looks like. And to some cis people, to a lot of them, because they've never experienced it, and they've never had cause to see the patterns, it's invisible to them. It's just invisible. But that- It's not just invisible, it's willful. If, um, if you asked a, a cis person to put themselves in that situation, let's say that one day you got married and you got married to someone. No, you know what? We can concoct a situation that's very similar and makes sense to, to um, cis people. Let's say that your boss liked uh your future spouse like when they were younger or something and like uh they they were familiar your boss knew them in the past and had a crush on them you get married to your spouse and then all of a sudden out of nowhere literally out of nowhere you start getting bombed on your reviews even though you can demonstrate that you're doing your job even though you can demonstrate that you're turning things in on time even though your boss can't demonstrate that you've done anything wrong but all of a sudden, because you married that person they used to like and they're mad at you about it, they just start, oh, you actually get a one. Fuck you. Let's let's get you bad performance re reviews so you don't get a raise. Let's get you bad par performance reviews so you have to go get coached by HR and threatened with your job so that you get, uh, you know, infractions on your job record. There's one. Cis people can, can imagine that easily. But also, the gay example. Let's imagine that you're working your job and then somebody finds out that you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend. And then your boss is just like, oh, I didn't know you were gay. And then all of a sudden you start getting low ratings. You get you start getting low, low uh, reviews. Uh, when you say, hey, um, my partner is sick. I need to take a sick day because uh, because 
my partner is in the hospital and they grant that for anybody else. But all of a sudden with you, sorry, I can't do that. You know, it's really becoming problematic. You know, you, you just want to go out there to help your friend and then you're like, well, they're my partner. And they're like, yeah, well, you know, you're not married. So yeah, there's a million examples. Pattern is there. And I like to think that a lot of you, um, if you actually do see what's going on, if you actually do watch that video, or, or hopefully this video's done enough, because um, I think the most telling part of all of this was that one clip I posted where Leona tried to explain why outing her the way she was outed had devastated her. And that manager just said, I don't understand. And that's a real problem because people don't understand. And because they don't see that there's an issue, they don't believe there's an issue there. And you know what? Some of this isn't necessarily transphobic born of hatred. It's not, it's not hateful transphobia. It's seeing someone change and assuming that that impacts their convenience and their comfort and the fact that they have to change, see someone differently, treat someone differently when they really don't. It makes me think, and I've thought about this for a while, it makes me think about the way, say, vegans are treated. Because they're treated like they're whiny and an inconvenience and they complain and they force their beliefs uh, onto other people. When Another example is anybody who has like a severe allergy, you know? Like if, if somebody works in your, in, your, uh, in your workplace and they have like a peanut allergy and you have a manager who's just like, oh my God, it's so annoying. We can't have peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And then you're like, well, were you gonna have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? And they're like, no, well, no, I like to eat pizza every day at lunch, but still. And most of the ones I know don't do that. Instead, they're treated as an inconvenience because people that aren't vegan have to think about vegan options, have to think about offering something a little bit different than what they're used to. So they project that, they project their lack of understanding and they project their issue with a change onto someone else. And it's, I, I noticed this like, fuck, so many years ago now. It's not just like something like veganism, it extends to allergies. I don't know if you've seen media portrayals of people with allergies as whiny and in positions and an inconvenience. Now, I'm definitely allergic to nuts. I know, ironic. And I feel awkward about that sometimes, self-conscious about that. I don't like to bring it up because I don't want to be any- No, I didn't pre-watch this. I just think it, I mean, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad that uh, Stephanie Sterling is talking about this. But I didn't, I haven't seen this video. Convenience. But that's what you're seen as if you're different, if you require a little more sensitivity, a little more understanding. You're an inconvenient, you're trouble, you're chaos, you're reliability. You're all the things that Zenimax and Bethesda said Leona was. And if you've never been treated like an inconvenience, you may never see the pattern. But it is there. It's as evident as the fact you have to thank God for me. One thing I neglected to make clear, and uh, Phoenix actually pointed it out uh, while they were watching me do uh, the video, is that any one situation that Leona has mentioned and that other trans people have mentioned in their lives, any one isolated situation can be taken as innocuous. It's the sum of the parts, it's the pattern, it's how all of these little things coalesce. It's not just one thing, it's never just one thing, or even a few. Lots of little things that add up to a big thing, which by the way, is how you can actually treat marginalized people well. Lots of little things, little acceptances. You do not have to rearrange your life. Just treating someone with kindness and understanding seems like a well, it seems like an obvious thing to say, but people go overboard. But people go overboard with the way they treat marginalized people because they think that's what we expect. And it's, it's not really. It really isn't. We want what everybody else wants. A simple fucking life. Starfield. 
All right, so that was a fantastic primer on the situation by James Stephanie Sterling, the amazing and incredible. Now we are going to go and watch um, the, the direct receipts as presented um, by Leona. That's what we are going to be diving into next. So you guys can see this shit and we can hear the full list of allegations. Now, this video is very long. Um, there may be points where we will skip forward. If there are things that are repeated, we may skip those things. But we're going to try and get as many of these receipts as possible. Um, I really wanted to see what James Stephanie Sterling had to say about it um, because their videos are, are usually absolutely fantastic. Um, and they have a history of holding Bethesda to the fire. But now we are going to look at the direct evidence right now let's do it hi how's it going I, I don't know i don't know what this camera angle is we're gonna do 175 that was a little too fast this this my my audio and my camera setup is um the level of quality you would expect for like you know a video conference or something not like a video that you're gonna put out for a bunch of people to see but you work with what you got um i have a cat my name is leona farron i'm a trans woman and I worked out there are no subtitles for this video. Uh, this is this this is a you know l this is not a a uh, produced a super hyper produced video so there's no subtitles. I apologize but at Zenimax online studios from October of 2018 to the beginning of May 2022. So four years a th a, a four year veteran at this company. Imagine giving your giving four years of your life to a company. In January, of only to only to in, to encounter this type of stuff that we've seen so far. Twenty twenty one, my boss outed me as a trans woman, and subsequent uh, events following that uh, eventually led to ending my career there. I documented a lot of these things. I recorded our one on one conversations. I took screenshots, and I want to share all of that with you now. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really scared to do that. I don't know how to approach it, um, but I have to because I I can't sit on this knowing that it can make a difference for um, anyone else coming down the line. I want to make sure that what happened to me never happens to anyone else ever again. How's the audio balance? Is, uh, is our, our, our voices at about the same level so that I can commentate? Maybe I need to lower it a little bit. Anybody who's in chat, let me know. Uh, again, I apologize for any audio inconsistencies. We had a uh, we had a piece of our usual streaming setup break at the beginning of stream. It's fine. Okay, it's good. All right. And every attempt that I tried to make to do that internally while I was employed there failed, leaving this as my last and only option. Um, so let's begin. I have censored the names of the people involved throughout the following screenshots and conversations that I have recorded. The only identity revealed in this video will be my own. It should also be noted that the roles and departments of employees at Zenimax changes constantly, and none of the people listed here still hold the same title at the company. I want to emphasize that I highly discourage any form of targeted harassment against the individuals involved in these recordings. My goal is the opposite of that, and it is my hope that by sharing this information to the public in this format that corporate policy at Zenimax will improve to avoid a repeat of the events that I am about to share. That being- e Extremely strong opener. Absolutely great to lay that out. Uh, for a number of reasons, but obviously um, it's really, really good uh, to take the approach of anonymity with the goal of actually changing things at that company. That is an incredibly respectful position to start with. Said, allow me to introduce our cast of characters. First, we have Elphaba, media arts team lead and my direct supervisor. Next, we have Ash, senior producer for the media arts team. Then we have Oswald, creative services director and Elphaba's supervisor. Clarice, Human Resources Director at Zenimax Online Studios. And then we have IT Guy, who is just a random IT guy who gets referenced in multiple recordings. I had told Elphaba in a private conversation that I was transitioning, and I wanted to discuss a time and date for me to have the opportunity to come out to the team. I wanted to keep things as casual and low-key as possible, and made it clear during this discussion that I did not want to schedule any kind of special meeting for this. I definitely prefer to use one of our upcoming team meetings as an opportunity to come out. We had agreed upon using our weekly team meetup on the afternoon of Friday, January 29th, as a platform for me to come out professionally as a trans woman to my teammates. Now, I want to comment on this. We, I mentioned this in passing before, but this is a pretty standard way to come out to people at a workplace. Um, 
as it turns out, for the for the cis and het heterosexual people who are here, um, it's pretty uncomfortable to live your life in the closet. And sometimes it becomes impossible if you're taking hormones um, or if uh, you are suffering from dysphoria, it can be uh, impossible to live your life in the closet. Obviously, if you're a gay person, you might be able to live your life in the closet, but it leads you to living a life of looking over your shoulder that is incredibly distressing and also means that you can't actually build fully social re relationships with your coworkers because you have to lie about your life. You can't talk about your partner or your life outside of work. Um, that was the norm for people for a long time uh, in America when discrimination against gay people was more common. Unfortunately, um, it is the current standard in America for trans people, that trans people have to go to great lengths to hide their identities and will usually, it is incredibly, incredibly common in America that people simply leave their job, transition as, uh, you know, transition and change their name and then go to a new job in their new, in their new identity. Um, which is also incredibly uncomfortable for a number of reasons, obviously, because it puts you in danger. Um, trans people face an absolutely unbelievable amount of workplace discrimination. This is well established uh, in research. Um, trans people are uh, uh, obviously the current fixation of a hate movement in the United States with deranged levels of obsession. The way that um, Leona is talking about doing this, having a casual meeting where you come out to your team is a healthy and, uh, and safe way to uh, address work, uh, transitioning on the workplace. Now, many workplaces have, uh, have you know, stepped into the year 2023 and are totally fine with working with trans people. Not all of them, but many of them. And this is one of the most common ways that uh, that coming out is done. You have in a casual environment, you say, hey, everybody, I want you to know uh, I am transgender. I'm transitioning. This is my new name. These are my new pronouns. Um, you know, you can say like you express your level of comfort. Um, sometimes some people who are OK with it will say, if you have any questions, please ask me directly. Other people will say, uh, I, I, I don't really feel comfortable asking you know, answering a whole lot of questions about my personal life. Regardless, you talk to your teammates on a human level so that it's handled in an official and safe environment where you have control of coming out. It is really simple to understand why that would be the case. You want your teammates to know, but you also uh, want it to be understood that this is not something that can be, um, you know, this is not to be the subject of gossip. It is not to be the subject of um, you know, of, of, of rumors and whispers and whatever. And that also that it happens in an environment where there are, uh, hopefully, uh, at least minimally supportive, uh, st uh, you know, uh, supervisors present. When the 29th rolled around, she canceled that team meeting during our morning scrum. A scrum, for those of you who don't know, is generally a short team meeting where goals and work progress is discussed. Our team scrum was held daily from 9.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. and is a Microsoft Teams group call with all team members present. The following is a screenshot of the private messages that I received during that scrum. As this is so they had it planned that there would be a normal team meeting, which she canceled without any explanation that we have here. That team meeting was supposed to be coming out. That's a pretty important thing. Uh, and uh, I guess we're gonna find out what follows. It's the only record I have of being outed by her. She starts by asking me via Slack if I want to book a specific meeting to come out after she canceled our afternoon team meeting. And as we had already discussed, I did not want that. I respond by saying that I'll bring it up during the retro on Monday. When I say I'll be on cam, I'm referring to how I have had my camera off for all meetings for months due to keeping my physical changes private. I had discussed with her previously that sharing my new photo and being on camera would all be part of my coming out. She does not seem to be okay with this, and I do not understand why looking dramatically different is a pressing concern that needed to be a- Are you planning to let, let me people know, especially if you look dramatically different? Also, that is all creative services teams, video and graphics. 
well, that's what the purpose of a meeting would be so that you could do it on your own terms. Because yeah, if you've been transitioning and your team is working mostly remote, you might want to be able to have an opportunity to safely explain why you look different than you did the last time everybody saw you. And to do so in the least awkward and least dangerous way possible. Dressed. I assure her that even if my work photo has updated on her end, nobody else has seen my updated picture yet. And so there's no need to rush anything. Again, I made it pretty clear during our initial private conversation that I needed this to be casual and within my control. Elphaba reveals my new work photo to the team via sharing her screen, outing me during the last few minutes of our morning scrum. Why would you ever do that? That's insane. That is an insane thing to do. You have a scrub, you had a meeting where where the person was going where where Leona was going to be able to talk about this on her own and instead you screen share the picture. What the absolute hell? That is like I I can't even think of a reason for that, especially when it's clear here that they've been discussing this and said, my pick is not updated. It will take 24 to 48 hours to update on everyone's computer. Even if you can see it, not everyone on the team can. So Leona specifically says, no one else can see my picture right now because I haven't said it to public. You can see it because you're the manager. And then after that, she then shares her screen revealing the picture. Insane behavior. Absolutely insane behavior. I'm shocked. Those who are participating in the meeting began talking about my new picture after it was revealed. Alphaba ends the morning scrum before I have the opportunity to say anything at all. Oh my god. So you didn't even let Leona talk. I try my best to regain control of the situation. I feel forced to say anything via any method now to even be able to participate in the conversation concerning my transition. Alphaba continues messaging me suggestions of handling it another way. In respect for you, I'm trying to soften the transition moment. Shoot, I change my background and people react. Lol, email is good too. That way people can respond privately to you. Just thoughts. Wow. Haha, <laughs> I'm trying to make it easier for you by me taking it out of your hands, not giving you any opportunity to talk directly to the people involved, and 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 making it a shocking moment that people that is not sanctioned and make it look like an deranged, deranged. This is just deranged behavior. Actually, like uh, mentally unwell behavior on the side of Elfaba. Like I know that some people might think. Oh, this is just like she doesn't know how to handle it. No, going out of your way when when you have an established way that you're going to do it to then do this extremely weird, oops, I showed a picture to everybody, and then you say, I'm trying to soften it for you. Deranged. Deranged behavior. I ignore them and post a Slack message on our group chat for my teammates. I was forced to come out via text chat very awkwardly and in no way how I had imagined it. I was devastated for the rest of that day. Later, I tried to bring this up in a one-on-one -on -one call with Alphaba, and I was told that she didn't have control over when my work photo updated, which was not the issue. The issue was that she undercut my opportunity to come out by sharing that photo with the team before I was ready. She did not apologize and defended her actions by saying she was just trying to help with the tone that I was being ungrateful. Oh, so she did do it intentionally. She did actually show the picture intentionally. It wasn't even an accident. That's even worse. Doing me a favor. I did not record this call, but afterwards, I began recording every interaction that I could due to how dramatically different I was being treated by her after it was revealed that I am a trans woman. The following is the first recording that I made where Elphaba calls me later in the week following our team retro. My approach to talking through things with her at this time was to stick to technical issues that I felt were affected by her changing behavior. Tier Star, thank you so very much for the tier one sub. Deeply appreciate the support. It means the world to me. Thank you so much. Behavior towards me and then move on to personal issues. My reasoning was that focusing on the output of the job was tangible and understandable, while trans issues can be difficult to directly address, especially with someone who is completely foreign to them. Unfortunately, even in sticking to the specifics of the job, it was not helpful. I never got to address anything beyond my first point, and the entire conversation fell apart on me. Um, so we had a retro, and every time we have a retro, I like to sync up with you guys um, to make sure there wasn't any outside, outside things, or if, if there's something that you wanted to bring up. 
mm. or get more clarity or anything. And if not, that's cool too. Yeah, uh, I did. Um, I'm kind of tiptoeing on it though because I'm trying to. I mean, really, my three goals is I just want to make things easier. I want to be able to uh, make these, uh, I guess, just more streamlined, I guess. But I think that in the end, if pursuing that's going to complicate things, and that's the opposite of what I want. So, I guess, hence the tiptoeing. Um, <laughs> but I guess you mentioned during our call earlier the, that the uh, move and rename script I created was creating issues with us checking our DDS images, and I don't really see the connection there. Um, uh, that's because people, you were, one of the scripts you have directly imports them into a folder, which that seems, yeah, that seems easy. But what you're not accounting for is human error. To you, everybody has a huge range of what is easy and what is difficult for them. Um, or where their mind can focus attention or where it doesn't. What that introduced was something so simple that it introduced risk because they no longer check their images. They're just like, system, do it for me. Um, well, I guess then that's, that's the point where I'm misunderstanding because I don't understand why, but what would stop someone from checking their images before they run the script? And what does the script have to do with that? Because- what um, It's what I don't want is I don't want anything to be a crutch or an excuse or, and the reason I say that is because several people mentioned, oh yeah, uh, I should probably check those. I just have it spit it straight in there. I literally got that dialogue several times from almost every person who's used it. So that tells me that they weren't checking. Um, it didn't, nothing happened at that time. It's more recent than things have been happening. So this is like, the, from what I can tell here, this is an incident of the, this is the first incident of the manager bringing up, um, very difficult to understand problems with their work. Remember how I said, um, that this is like an incredibly common way to passively aggressively damage somebody who's otherwise doing good work at your place. Oh, Mm, yeah, I don't know. You just did it wrong. And then you ask, well, what did I do wrong? And they go, mm, I don't know. It's just not the way I want it. So I'm going to have to mark you up here. This is definitely really weird. And the way that she's talking about this is uh, incredibly cagey and strange. If this was a manager who suddenly started having problems with your work out of nowhere, um, and the only thing that they could do was respond in really cagey and, and, and uh, nonsensical ways, yeah. That's going to start raising red that's going to start raising red flags. And also, we already know because we've seen one of the clips from down the line that she started giving her flat ones on her reviews, just one, a, a a 1 out of 5 on everything. So, it clearly continues beyond this. Um, it's not don't take it personal. It's not personal. It's not against you. It's saying that a system this is a tool. Do not depend on the tool ever, 100%. You can use it, you can be efficient with it, it can save you time, but don't always depend for it to do your job, which is check the images. Sure. Um, I mean, it's. I, mean, I, don't, I don't understand again, but I guess. But so maybe that's not for you to understand. Okay. Well, um... I don't understand why this tool that moves images should prevent someone from checking their images well it's not for you to understand interesting an interesting response there very interesting i don't need to make it make sense to you i'm reprimanding you don't take it personally but also i'm not going to explain my reasoning to you i guess i just i'll, I'll back up from that because oh, oh, overarching I, I do feel like anything I bring to the table gets shut down. And I'm not sure if it's because it's me or if there's something I did or if I'm taking the wrong approach, but it, it happens a lot and I'm, it, it really bothers me. It demotivates me because I feel like. Real quick, I want to tell, I want to tell a small story from a job that I once worked. Okay. One, one time I was working a job and my boss uh, did not like uh, one of uh, my coworkers. Okay. And 
the reasons were totally personal. Um, they, that person had been working there for a long time, but obviously my boss didn't want to just fire them randomly for no reason because, well, then they would have to pay unemployment. They could contest it, all kinds of stuff. She just really didn't like this person. Um, and so she started going over every single thing that they did with a fine tooth comb to a degree that no one else got that treatment. She would hem and haw whenever, um, whenever this coworker, oh, I should, I, sh I forgot to mention, I should, I should have mentioned this coworker had a chronically ill, uh, partner, a wife, wife. And, uh, this coworker's wife was like, like had like a severe back injury, like a really severe one. And, um, and so all of a sudden the manager starts being like, mm, yeah, I don't know. You're really disrupting things now when they were using their, their time that they got from the benefits from being, from having multiple years on the job. It got to the point where the manager was personally combing through every single, uh, uh contract that this person wrote looking for minor errors that they could chastise them on. No one else on the team received this treatment whatsoever. And it culminated in this, in, uh, in, in a literal setup where, um, the manager, uh, told the, told some, uh, this person to rent out a vehicle that had an issue on the vehicle, gave managerial approval on it, but never actually gave the approval on paper only gave it vocally and uh the car went out that had a very minor issue nothing that would endanger an employee but enough that it would show up on the paperwork and then the manager initiated pu punitive action against the employee and fired them and claimed i never said that i never said that at all and it was just manager's word versus employee and it was really funny because uh, I remember after they got fired, uh, after their last day of work, um, my manager came into work and took uh, and took this employee's business cards and like literally went like <laughs> and then dumped them into the trash. I'm not even kidding you. Straight up went took the business cards and like laughed and dunked them into the trash and then went oops. Literally not even kidding you. Getting a lot of vibes from this situation. Just saying. Just saying. What am I doing wrong that is uh, going against the grain or giving people an impression that I don't think is accurate? I want to fix that. So I think that... Is this just one example of... Right, yeah. I think that... Because to me... I'm can you give me another? Uh, I would say that when we were working together on finding something that would make our, our Photoshop exports work easier or for, for the mm -hmm. image preview. Um, I was told when I brought that up that that sounds like an interesting idea uh, and that I should, that, you know, but to stay focused on the goal and okay. really make sure I get that done. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I threw that together before we had a meeting and it was while I was waiting for feedback, which I felt was like free time you meant. And then I, I was told I shouldn't have done that. And I kind of felt like, well, uh, I felt like I was getting a mixed message or that no matter what I did in that situation, <laughs> there wasn't a right answer. Um, so I, so I don't know if I'm, yeah. I, I think, I think one, you should, even the two examples that you gave me, there's only, I mean, there's two common denominators, me and you, but that's it. There's no other common denominators. Um, so that tells me they are- At this point in the conversation, I was becoming scared because El Faba had never behaved like this towards me until very recently. Hmm. They are events, but again, I, I, well, I don't think you should generalize. Um, or be careful about generalizing. That's- I think it's not good for you or me um, because we're not tackling the issue at the time, right? Um, 
so that particular time, that last one is, I'm trusting in you that you are utilizing your time for art. It is, I don't, at the end of the day, like it's great that you can provide more, but you have to provide the art. And I feel like at times, this doesn't address why I was asked to create a tool for the team only to then be told I shouldn't have spent time on it. If I didn't spend time on it, then I would have also been failing to produce results and ignoring requests. This was a no-win scenario. This is something that managers do when they want to sabotage you. They give you impossible tasks where if you do it, you get punished. And if you don't, you get punished. And they can do that because they have power over you. And you become unfocused to, yes, you're trying to help, but there needs to be a time for that. I need to have confidence that you're focused on the art side of it and delivering the products. I mean, that's a bigger conversation because we already talked about it, but. Sure, sure. Um, and it's not against you. If you think this is against you, it's not. Okay. I mentioned, and I apologize if you feel like it is, but you, I'm not gonna say you, like remove you from this. Like you provided a tool the tool I felt was part of the problem in this scenario. It wasn't the whole problem. I mentioned many other things. There's QA. There's each person is part of that, not just you. Um, it is a multi. It's multifaceted. It's not that you wrote the tool that removed yourself. It's not personal. You didn't doom the the, the team to failure. I, I didn't even think of it like that. That's sure, not I, it like I, at all. I definitely don't think that. Um, okay. It's not you. It's the tool. I don't see how but I, it's fine. Uh, I mean, in the end, really, I, I don't want to, uh, I don't want there to be any misinterpretation. I want As a, so I, yeah. I want you to I mean anything you say goes completely a hundred percent. Um, but it's I, not, I, that's not how it is. That's not like, we're a team and we're it is my goal to try to get us to a good place or to help guide it is not that this would be the point in the conversation that made me decide it was time to try and move to another team i don't understand why saying in the end i don't want any misinterpretation whatever you say goes was taken so badly all right let's see what happens it's not a relationship or, or like something like it's not that oh. okay we're a team and um... i will not um, wh what? I completely make mistakes, but it is valid where I'm sitting. There is a lot that you may not be seeing that's motivating, obviously, uh, decisions. Yeah. But I would encourage you as someone who, if you want to be a technical artist, you need to see beyond if someone tells you something isn't working and you've done a lot, you've done a lot of great things on that, but just your comment right now, I don't see, I don't see it. You've got to try to see it. That's actually what a technical artist does is they listen to the artists. Sure. I just spoke with, um, and asked her what specific advice about the script that might've been creating issues there. What did you ask? Oh, okay. Um, and she said it was working great and she didn't, she also, she didn't see what the, yeah, that, that, that should just be checked before you run the script. I was, oh my god. Yes. Right. Check check your art. Again, it's not on you. I know. It's not it's not the tool. It is the responsibility of the artist. They are leaning on a tool to do their job. And they're dependent. It's not AI. It's a tool. Okay. So it's like running a Photoshop filter and then being like, I did it. No, you didn't. You just you just ran a watercolor filter on the image and that's that's not how it works. I can, uh, I, I, I think I can point out a difference there. And it might be something that might just be on my end or it could be a misunderstanding we're having, but I, I definitely think it's worth pointing out um, because I'm totally 100% on board when it comes to doing uh, manual work when it comes to art, because that's where it comes from. It comes from you. And when you're in Photoshop and you're just running a filter on an image and you think you created something new, you did it. Uh, you, you might as well put a magnifying glass on it and take taking a picture. It doesn't matter. You're not doing enough to transform it to call it your, your own. Um, but I, I have a, when it comes to the, the, the system, the computer, the way things are organized in the hard drive, 
uh, file naming, saving, storing, backing up files, all of that, uh, the less people are involved with that side of things, in my experience, the more time they can spend devoted to actual development and the less errors there are in the end because the machine is just going to do what the machine This manager is talking about a tiny script that just quickly automates the moving of files from one folder to another. And the way she's talking about this is so fucking strange. It's like at every moment of this conversation, she's been reaching to find something wrong. And then she even said, oh yeah, well, other people had issues with it. And the employee said, I understand what you're saying, but I actually just talked to the artist and they said they liked the tool. It's just crazy. This is like crazy making. She's told as far as that goes. Um, so I don't know if that comparing it to a Photoshop filter is exactly the same. Uh, uh, all right. Yeah, that was just an example. Sure. Thank you for calling out that it's different. I'm trying oh to find God. common ground with you. Um, oh my God. I, mean, I, so that, I just wanted to. I, it's it's totally fine. I just wanted to put that out there. So that was the first recording that I ever made. Following that, there were many, many more. If I were to show all of them to you, though, this video would be days long. So I did my best to keep my cat out of the room. <laughs> but unfortunately, that's an impossible task. Um, so he's just going to be here, because either he's going to be here or he's going to be clawing at the door. <laughs> anyway, I curated out either conversations that I felt were indicative of repeated behavior toward me or key events in and of themselves. The next two clips that I'm about to play are just examples within the following week of that conversation that you just heard of repeated behavior toward me that would continue moving forward. I only got three lopes from world building. Okay. Two of them, I, two of, I was only going to sign. I had, I had asked El Fab, or I had told El Faba I was very interested in world building and applied for an open position on the world building team. The next week, everyone on the team was given world building assignments except for me. This audio recording is her explanation as to why I was being excluded from the same assignments as everyone else on the team. Two people. And to be frank, they're really fast. So the time that they have, which is three days to provide world building to another team is, is best spent with those two people because they are really fast. Um, the third was a request from the world building team for that third person to do it. I was going to ask to do those interesting locations if time allowed, but we only have this week. In the future, maybe more, but we only have this week. We have to start crown next week. The other co-workers that she mentions were assigned world building points of interest and she is implying they won't have time to get them. They of course did. Ultimately, I, I was the only one on the team not giving the opportunity to do world building, and this immediately happened following my express express interest in it and applying for the open world building position. It can't go over. I wonder what thing might have happened in recent memory that could lead to you actually applying for a position and then every single other person on your team except for you getting to be able to work on that project and then you getting a bullshit reason in response. Hmm, I wonder. Um, it's nothing against you by any means. I, I still see my old picture on Teams. You know what's odd is I don't see that. I see your new picture. I don't know what it is. Some people see it and some people don't. It pops up randomly, it seems. I think they have to update their Microsoft. Whatever. It's just... Yeah. Sometimes. Are you are you upset to see that picture? Or? It's just jarring. I hate it. And I always hated it. We all do. Let's be honest. All of us look terrible in those pictures. Like they, They're like, say cheese and like, oh, they're terrible. They're ugly as pictures. <laughs> in the next recording, I try to address with Alphaba the time that I'm going to need to take off. So that's just an example of sort of so brushing aside why a trans person might not want to have an old picture can be be displayed in the system over and over again. Um, for trans-related medical care coming up, and um, that turns into a conversation about how I need to be assigned different kinds of work from the rest of the team now, how my expectations need to change, and how I'm being put under a velocity evaluation. You're going to hear a lot of conversation in the recordings ahead about my uh, velocity and goals and getting my numbers up. Um, my velocity was fine. It was fine for years until I came out as a trans girl. 
Yeah, it's definitely odd, isn't it, that um, this person has been working on uh, at ZeniMax for four years, and the only time that we know of that they actually start getting reviewed is within the following weeks of them coming out as trans. Huh. Then it was a way Alphaba was using to push me out, essentially. Um, I wish I saw this at the time. I wish you could see it, and I wish I could say it with a stronger foundation of evidence supporting it. She was unfairly judging my velocity to make my numbers look bad in order to get rid of me, and she wasn't letting me transfer to another team because she was worried that whoever I worked under at that point wouldn't get rid of me, and she'd have to continue working with a trans girl. This is never expressly stated, but I feel like with what I have recorded, that motivation is pretty clear, especially considering at the end of this video, um, I'm going to show you all the work that I did during this time. And my velocity was 112%. So keep wow. Keep that in mind. Hmm. I wonder, I wonder what could lead you, I wonder what could lead someone to be put under undue analysis within weeks of them coming out as trans when the objective measurements of their performance are perfectly fine. I wonder what it might be. I wonder what we might call that. Maybe we would call that a uh, dis discrimination? In the following recordings. Um... How, was, how was last week? How was our Thursday? It's uh, I don't know. A, lot, uh, a lot of stuff. Uh, I guess I'm... I'm inclined to be frank about a few things, but I won't. If that's too much, I'll just let that slide. But, Go ahead. I mean, this is what one ones are for, is to have discussions. Uh, well, I guess for starters, I would, part of the reason I wanted to find something in another department, something that I, mm -hmm. that like, to me, um, world building is something that I've always done as an element of everything else. So it's something I felt like mm -hmm. I could uh, do easily as background noise, like a job for a job sake, so that I could kind of keep things always, yeah. for the time being. Yeah. Uh, it's a hard job. I'll be honest. It's hard. I would, for me, world building was harder than this job, but I do like post production. The, but the sheer amount of content they have to do, it's a lot. But you know, it's it is pretty repetitious. So there's that. I can rely on that, which is kind of more. I can do. I can do hard work. It's the, the plate spinning that gets a little much sometimes. Um, what do you What do you mean plate spinning? Um. Sorry, I'm just writing notes. So. Oh, sure. Uh, I well, I'm just trying to think of the best way to describe it. And I don't just mean, by the way, everything from the job. I guess it's uh, it's, it's uh, balancing things like well, just as a, uh, um, like just to, like real life anecdotal mm -hmm. example from uh, recent history. The last week I uh, had to go get blood work done on top of having the LTO video and having to go back and do revisions on the Abner shot. Mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's work elements and life elements that I'm, that are- mm, You're trying like, to balance. Yeah. I, I, I would say um, you definitely should be more, I, I need to get a hold of you more, right? Like, I don't know if you like log off to Slack or what happens there, but Friday you weren't on most of the day. So I was like, is he working? I don't know. <laughs> you had your doctor's appointment? Yeah, and, and it's not for me going to really slow down. I'm going through the process now of getting a, uh, the uh, waiting on my new primary care, getting an FMLA form submitted to HR so that I can readdress that because I'm probably there's just things where like and then I come back from getting the blood work done. They're like you should you should have somebody to eat and take a nap, but I'm like but I guess I got four more hours of work to do, and like I'm like, mm -hmm. exhausted and I'm just staring at the screen without anything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's uh, if all I had it's 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 it's, and it's a new process, so it's not like I'm doing something that comes natural. I'm trying to be innovative constantly. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely part of this position. Um, you are not the only one who has felt like I'm communicating a specific example of when I had my blood drawn and how it affected my work energy. And she's making it sound like I've given up on the job. After this conversation, whenever I needed to use paid time off for a doctor's appointment, it was equated with burnout and not being made for this kind of work. Hey, um, news flash to this manager paid time off is paid time off. That's a benefit of the job. 
just because you don't want people to use the breaks that they have a right to doesn't mean that they don't have a right to use that time. That's another thing. Interesting. Interesting. I bet everybody else on this team was regularly using their paid time off for whatever they wanted. It's interesting, huh? This in the career of this type of position, um, by no means. Like some people are built for this. That's how their personality is. Um, others can do it for two to three years. And then it's the same thing. It's actually the same type of comments you have. So um, know that you are not alone in that. <laughs> that. This is not an easy job. As easy. Leona, she was, she was explicitly saying the type of work that I'm doing on this team is a little bit hard for me to manage with multiple plate spinning. Going from this task to this task to this task is not uh, working out all that great for me, and I would prefer to move to another team to be able to do that. And keep in mind, we know that Leona has been employed at ZeniMax Bethesda for up uh, nearly four years at this point. Because people say, oh, it's just screenshots. No, it's not that easy. People say a lot of things. <laughs> it's, that's I, I'm. I think that we get a lot of positive reactions from both uh, other departments in the community that really are. Uh, like they, even if they don't appreciate the work put into it, the result is still something they go, "Well, oh, that's neat." It's quite interesting. So, how? What can I do? We're not going to have like an answer for you, or. But I would like to know from you what in this position could you do that would help in this transition or help um, reduce the amount of stress? I know it's a loaded question. Sure. Uh, I don't know if I have an answer. I think okay. it's just the job. Um, it's, it's the way it is. And uh, I, I've been trying to try things at different angles. If I find something, I'll let you know. Okay. <laughs> but I, okay. I, um... So, well, you know, I do have to say that balance is needed, right? Like if you are continuing to be on this team, we've got to find balance somehow. Um, if, if you are overwhelmed with the amount of, you know, doctor's appointments, or if they're asking you to not do something for three to four hours, I just well, to take the time, um, which is not I'm yes. going to affect my career. I'm actually terrified of that. Um, because my so have you considered, well, yeah, is it a different position, like a different role. Um, not that I want you off the team. Like I chose people to be on this team for a reason, right? Um, I needed to be able to discuss with my team supervisor the time off that I would need in the near future for my transition-related medical care, which is totally reasonable. If you have time off, you are entitled to use that. You also, people are also at, you know, most of these companies provide medical leave of some sort or another, which you are legally uh, uh, entitled to. I get told that my expectations will need to be adjusted due to my upcoming FMLA leave, and it also gets suggested that my role be downgraded from mid-level to an associate. So they want to lower you down. They want to lower her down for no for no reason other than, uh, well, I can't actually demonstrate any way that you've not been performing. Um, I noticed that you weren't logged on on Slack. I didn't actually have anything to say to you, but you weren't logged on on here. And apparently, uh, your, your reason, which is that you were at a doctor's appointment and you had a, a ton of blood drawn, you still got your work done. Notice that she never said that, and that there wasn't any work not being completed. All she has is all the manager has is completely vague, uh, uh, abstract nebulous reasons for why she's not happy, AKA a personal issue. And it all just so happens to center her personal issues all just seem to flare up around trans related stuff. Very interesting. But I would say no matter what, that if you are always, you know, having to go to the doctors frequently, or they're asking you to not do something for a few hours or whatever is not good because I'm assuming you're just working or you're working at hundred percent. Um, I don't know. I Why would you be assuming that? Would it be because the work's getting done? And you're just trying to find a reason to be mad at this person? You're just finding a reason to be mad at her? I'm assuming you're working the, the core hours of what you're supposed to do. So being more transparent with that is probably important. 
Um, okay. I would get told to be more transparent. She just told her manager exactly what was going on. She said, I went and had to get a bunch of blood drawn. And then I sat down for a little bit because my doctors told me that I was lightheaded or whatever. I assume it's because of lightheadedness that you need to sit down after having that much blood drawn. Uh, yep. I guess. Well, and then to, uh, to add to that, it's rough to kind of the, um, this job is keeping me alive. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. I know it's not, I know that sounds dramatic. I know that's how that sounds, but it's really like, I don't know what I would do right now. It's, it's, it's just not that easy to find balance. And I know that as much as there's resources out there that would be accommodating, that's still, that's still, everything has an image. It's all about optics. So uh, mm -hmm. I have to be careful how I approach things, even if it means overworking myself or trying to catch up in off hours, which is something I've been sometimes able to do and sometimes not. And that's, uh, you did get hired as a media artist, right? And it definitely is a different position than an associate. That's why I brought up associate, because it's like an associate or an assistant. I don't remember, associate. But they have different um, requirements. So, um, shoot, I told totally space that. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I don't know. If I had something like 10 minutes. Yeah, that was a. Oh, okay, that's what it was. Um, let's talk realistically. On, um, I gave you a number that was for a media artist. Mm -hmm. Um, I would like you to research through your own deliverables and I want you to look around this time. I started being told by Alfaba that my numbers were not high enough. And so I was put under velocity review with her and our producer, Ash, Ash tracked my velocity over the next few weeks under his review. I met all those goals. Arr! The man, uh, what the fuck? Oh, God damn it. Why did she have to do so good at her job? Now I don't have an excuse to fire her. When an objective outsider looks in, oh, they're not validating my weird prejudice. Holy shit, man. What the fuck? To see what you have accomplished, you know, in the next, in the last three months. I want you to show, show me what it is so we can understand where you are and your own realization of where you are and where we need you to be. I can work with you. If 16 is too high, which is, you know, the requirement, let's see what we could do about ramping it over time versus hitting the wall at hundred percent. If the expectation is, or not expectation, if you are not even going to hit 16 without killing yourself, like that's not an option. Um, there's, there's some reasonable goals that you need to hit. Um, but let's both get on that same page to understand where you are. Yeah. But, ha but none of this conversation up to this point has been about her not meeting her goals. She's been meeting her goals. She's been saying that this type of work is not is not is not what I want to do and I'd like to move to a different type of work but the manager won't budge on it and is now trying to imply that she's failed when she hasn't failed even the manager hasn't said that she's failed she's just implying that it might happen but it hasn't so we can understand where you're going to go in a very healthy and productive form sure i okay. would prefer to just hit the goal honestly and i think that would be across the board to uh, both you and Ash. that would be a uh, ideal. Uh, so I'm going to have to. I mean, yeah, but it's it's not. If you are the the important thing to remember about this job is longevity. It's not. We are telling stories. We're trying to engage in an audience. We're trying to. You put a lot into an image. Mm -hmm. If you are not, you have to have mental like strength and physical strength to tell to to tell the stories over and over again. Otherwise, you're not going to be at your, I don't even need you at 100%. But if I see the quality dropping and you have to keep redoing things over and over um, and I'm not seeing growth or consistency, that's telling me that that's not the way to go. I mean, you need, it needs to be a balance. Not like one shot per month balance. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I, I uh, uh, okay. Does that make sense? I, yeah. Um... Are you worried? What's... If you want to hit 16, okay, but not when you're saying you have to stay up every single night. Well, I, I mean, I would expect some. It's, it's just been. Because in week two and a half, you're going to be a burnt crispy person. <laughs> okay. And then you're not helping anybody because burnt crispy people cannot be productive and they won't create great art. And that's what we got to do. So. Remember that the beginning of this conversation was the manager getting super offended that Leona used her time off to go to the doctor 
and that that was at a, a supposedly inconvenient time for the manager, and now the manager is desperately trying to reframe the conversation to somehow be about burnout, when all that all that Leona actually said was the type of work that I'm doing on this team is a little bit hard to manage. I'm able to do it, but given that I got to go to the doctor, I feel like I'm spinning a lot of plates and it's fairly stressful. So I would like to do a different type of work if the position is open. And then it's turned into this. Oh. Okay. Well, I, mean, I was just talking about getting um, the FMLA forms into uh, HR so that I can... Can you explain the FMLA? Uh, family medical leave is for the, um, it's basically oh, it is. for qualifying medical procedures. So, uh, okay. Okay. I'm nice. so sorry. I was thinking of something else, which is, thank you for explaining that. No, it's, it's fine. It's just the, um, especially, I mean, it's, you know, things are, uh, sure. interesting. So I'm, I need to be ready to, uh, and have the, um, I have all my, my papers. Ready. Okay. So, so what is your, and you don't have to answer me this now, but. We're going to have to set some stricter um, expectations. And the reason I say that is because we have quote unquote customers, right? And I'm assuming I have so many people. Okay. Something here's the, here's an interesting thing real quick. I just want to say this. Okay. Uh, companies have medical leave built in as a benefit. Now companies do this in all kinds of different ways. And depending on the state the company is in, sometimes there's state laws about the medical leave. But using the benefit that a company promises you as a part of your employment is not anything wrong. If it's inconvenient to a manager, the manager being a leader, being a manager needs to do some motherfucking managing. It's called, that's your job. You want to talk about performance reviews. Maybe this manager needs to have some, um, maybe we need to um, adjust some expectations for this manager so that we can have better throughput to our customers. It's so annoying. This type of deranged behavior is like the weird power tripping while being completely useless that it, that like characterizes the middle manager as an archetype. The middle manager type human being is this type of person. They make, they, they pick someone that they can, that they perceive as vulnerable, that they can blame everything on and try to ruin that person's life while being completely incompetent in their own right. Your company provides medical leave as a benefit upon signing up for the job. Leona has been working for your company as far as we can tell just fine for three years. Now she has a medically necessary procedure related to transition care that she needs to have done. And you're making a big stink about it because why? Because you're mad that that's what you offered because you're not a good enough manager to fix the problem. Ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous on the team and they're producing so many, whether it's high or low, but I kind of need to have an understanding of what that is. Um, are you, you know, and I'm sure at some point you will totally talk through this, but you know, in the FMLA plus PTO, are you expected to do 50% of the hours you usually do or 25 or you see where I'm going at? Like, so I understand yeah. how, how much is Ray going to be here or what is, yeah. Uh, I'm sure dead naming oh or what is your drops dead name then says uh or what is your name this is like what like uh uh months after months no no let's see w uh within the weeks after this manager also forcibly outed her to her team you i mean i the 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 answer is calculating and you'll be in the loop on that, but things are, uh, okay. Do you expect to take long, um, no, it's, it's, it's not going to be anything like, I mean, okay. In the interest of fairness, while I had been going by Leona at this time among my friends and family, my name would not be updated within Zenimax system until June of 2021. All right. That's fair. That's kind of fair, but to be fair, we've already, just, whatever. We'll give her a pass this one time. Okay. We'll give her a pass. 
Zenimax would not end up fully upgrade, updating my name and gender marker within their systems until I could provide them with a new social security card and driver's license. These documents would take months to acquire. This right here is super interesting, okay? Zenimax would not fully update my name and gender marker within their systems until I could provide them with a new social security card and driver's license. These documents would take months to acquire. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Um, no company on the planet should make it that difficult to change your things. You should not have to make a change to a federal document to have your, your name changed within a system. And most companies, by the way, do not do that. Um, most companies don't even require you to like provide any sort of legal paperwork if you get married um, outside of like a marriage certificate. And that's like maybe it. These systems are completely run by these companies and don't tie to your federal identification or driver's license in any way. Uh, that's just a really outdated and pathetic system on Zenimax's part. Um, and I guarantee you they don't have, I, I guarantee you they don't require that for when people get married. I would be willing to put money on the fact that they don't require you to submit a new social security card and driver's license if you get married and change your last name. I guarantee you all you have to do is talk to your manager and they fill out a little piece of paperwork and then it goes in and then it's changed within the system. Completely and utterly ridiculous. Yeah, if she was cis and married, this would have been instant. It would have been one paperwork. It's so funny. It's so insane, the selective bias that's given. Oh, you got married and you're a cis person? Congratulations, we have no problem. There's no security issues or whatsoever. They invent reasons to discriminate. There isn't a security issue with changing your name that you're going by on a day-to-day -day basis, requiring a social security card and driver's license. If you... If they, if they were really that concerned about somebody just randomly changing their name, ask for a letter from a, um, ask for a letter from a, uh, doctor. And you could just have, and then, and then Leona could have just said, Hey doctor, can you sign that I'm going through gender transition? And then you get the letter from the doctor and change it. It's completely absurd to say that you need to have a social security card and a driver's license to update your username at a company that is just outdated and embarrassing. Straight up. Um, I'll tell you what I know now, that um, FMLA doesn't kick in until after I use up all my PTO. Uh, okay. So I'm going to have to... Um, Is it like a week or two? Or? I don't know. I'm going to have to talk to my doctor about it because they don't know yet either. They need to get the... Also, FMLA exists specifically to keep employees' medical matters private and to protect employees' right to take medical leave without retaliation from their employer. Yeah, that's what I was just talking about. Asking me to provide further details that I haven't even discussed with my doctor and using my medical leave against my work velocity and output is highly illegal. Lawyer up, Le Leona. Really Lawyer up, Leona. Leona. Straight up. I mean, I don't know if you want the details, but there's going to be a lot of, um, like, uh, just, just... Surgeries or something? No. Uh, Life? Uh, hormone regulation that can mm -hmm. result in certain side effects that may make it difficult for me to... Mm -hmm get out of bed or, or go to bed, you know, just, just finding the balance can take time. And so there's uh, a certain amount of <laughs> experimentation involved with that because everyone's unique and you need to find what. Oh, I get it. Uh, I am great. Yeah. Like I am a woman. I couldn't, you know, I don't know if you want. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just, it's just, it's going to be a process. What? I'm sorry. What the fuck? I couldn't, you know, I don't know if you want. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just, it's just, it's going to be a process. Uh, okay. Sometimes there's going to be moments where I'm just going to have to follow my doctor's advice because it hasn't worked out for me this past year trying to just work against it. And it's not, um, I got to prioritize, I have to prioritize, blah. I have to prioritize my health. I get it because I am a woman. Oh my God. I have to. Yeah. Um, yes. And also as Salty Shea says, uh, her boss is not entitled to that kind of information. Why is she even asking all this? Because she's power tripping and she's looking for excuses to try and find a way to, to screw Leona over. This is the, the type of behavior that's on display here is so blatant. No, that's 100%. And, and like I said, if you if you can be more transparent, myself, the company, you know, Oswald, we can work with that. Because there are people who have massive, like, crazy migraines all the time. They literally take a month off because mentally their brain got fried from all kinds of crazy migraines. So 
Um, but the more we understand the time that is needed, and then we can work around. I did request time off via email for the week of 301 to 305 following this call, and it was approved. If this was going to have an effect on my career, I wanted to take care of as many things as I could in a short amount of time. What we're seeing here, by the way, what we've been seeing, we've been watching 42 minutes of this account so far, and what we have seen is a manager that is trying to find every single thing that, that, that she can on this trans woman. That this trans woman has evidence uh, uh, that, that, uh, you know, has evidence of, of doing basically everything right. And, and a, a slew of criticism and, uh, and, uh, error hunting and, uh, literal review processes that all begin conveniently the moment that she comes out as trans, or I should say, sorry, the moment that her manager outs her to her team as trans. If that makes sense. Sure. Otherwise, it's just like a weird straight race, and that's a little hard for me to follow. Yeah, yeah. and there's, uh, there, you, I'll, I'll let you know when I know it's not going to be anything like 25 percent of my time or anything. But there will be chunks of time, probably a week or two here and there, um, okay. that I might need to just. It's, it's almost a difficult. It also makes it difficult for me to find. Esbork says, "Which chat is on screen? That's my website chat. For those of you who are watching, I haven't done this. It's been it's been too long." First of all, if you are here and enjoying the show, please press subscribe down below and please press like as well while you're down there. Both of them cost nothing and I would love to have you among my viewers and among my likers. Secondly, if you want to be on the beautiful site chat, you can come and join that for free on my website, demonmama.com forward slash live. We have a, this, as you can see, it's a very uh, busy and friendly chat room. Uh, and it's really easy to, to, to join. You can log in with Discord or, t or Twitch or Twitter or Reddit. Oh, there's a whole bunch of different options for signing in, and you can make your account on the website. We would absolutely love to have you. You get to have all the cool emojis. Look at how many cool emojis are coming up. Look at that. Look at them all. There's so many cute ones. Look, there, there's all the frogs, the cute demon frogs. Here's the nerd emoji. There's so many cute ones. You get them for free. So come join the website. We would love to have you. Anyway, thank you for being here. Thank you for subscribing to the channel and liking the video. And let's continue with this coverage of this ridiculous situation. Equilibrium with, you know what I mean? With, with yes. uh, having to balance, uh, with, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. um, have you considered, have you, do you see yourself, I don't know, I'm kind of brainstorming, but I don't even know if we can do that. I don't think that that's going to, if, um, I'd like to just stay the course at the moment of things uh, and kind of see, I, I just, I feel like I can, especially this week, um, really feel confident I can hit those marks. I have nothing going on besides work, so I can really buckle down and do the face and body markings, get those things okay. done, and I can um, hit that goal, I think, pretty easily. Well, I won't say easy, but you know what I mean, uh, yeah. uh, reasonably. Yeah. So uh, we'll take that a week at a time, and um, if I can find my stride with that, then there's, then there's, there's a non-issue. Um, okay. Okay, that's fine, but I think in two weeks when we have our next one-on-one, I think it'll be important to talk about where you are and um because i like i said i don't know what's going on with the world building um and where uh i'm sure you'll hear something from them but i haven't caught up with them um because you obviously did express the reasons why you're going to that so i think there will be a point if you if you do or don't get those that job um that we need to discuss you know your work on the team and uh and just kind of spitballing that you know, is there other options? Secular Socialist says, I just don't understand how our society tolerates this type of blatant discrimination against trans people. What can be done so this is never tolerated or normalized at any company? Well, there's a number of things that can be done, but one of them is that you make sure that when they do this behavior, that, that it hurts them. You make sure you get things in writing, you make sure you keep things recorded when it's legal to do so, and you contact a lawyer, you don't go down without a fight. Uh, it has to be made, the co companies only understand money. That's it. That is the only language that corporations speak. So what you have to do is if they are treating you like hell, if they are uh, mistreating them, you have to make sure that it is expensive for them to do so. You have to be willing to sue. You have to be willing to lawyer up. You have to be willing to have all of these stupid meetings. And it is terrible. But that is the only way that you fight back against this stuff and by making it expensive on a broader level.
covering these types of stories, making sure that politicians pass laws that make this much harder to do. Unfortunately, the workplace environment is inherently imbalanced. I mean, most of us here are lefties. Most of us acknowledge that the the relationship of the owner to the worker is one that is inherently exploitative. Someone has the food, the money that you need to survive, and someone wants to use your body to accomplish their goals. So they offer you a crumb of food and money, and you have to use their body, your body to accomplish what they want. That is inherently exploitative. And you, you, the only way that you make anything better is by fighting really hard back to make it more difficult for them to exploit you, more difficult to exploit others. And of course, you know what else helps? Unions. You want to know why unions help? Because unions can stand together when shit like this happens. Unions can stand arm in arm and say, we're not going to let people be treated this way. We're not going to let our trans siblings uh, be treated this way. We're not going to let our disabled siblings be treated this way. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't either. I don't know either, but so. I, yeah. I don't want to, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to fail. So there's, there's, I don't, I don't think that's, uh, that's an option. Um, so there's no, not for any of us. Cause then none of us will have a job. It would be code fail. Well, let's not, Even let's, just, let's just, let's not with that for, <laughs> um, but we can, okay. uh, but I definitely want you, you've expressed quite a bit. Right. And I thank you for that and being candid. Um, but those discussions will have to happen because part of it is I can't go day to day. Um, and I want to find something that's brings momentum for you and me, like, and the team. Okay. Um, but yeah, we can keep chatting about that later. Cool. Yeah. Um, like, uh, I mean, okay. I'll, All right. I'll talk to you later. All right. Thanks, Ray. Later. Bye. Bye. I'd requested a week off to focus on my personal life and doctor's appointments. The upcoming recorded conversation, um, is taking place during a Wednesday afternoon. I had reached out to Alfaba to let her know that I was able to return to work early. The products I was previously assigned were given to my teammates, and so I'm asking for clarification on what I should be working on when I return. Instead, I get persuaded to not return to work. Thank you very much for the $5 super chat, another bored person. This show is 100% viewer supported. So all of you who donate through the website, which goes 100% to me, or through YouTube, which goes mostly to me, you are deeply appreciated. Thank you so very much. Can you check Discord? Of course I can. What's up? Um, yeah, actually, Rapti, let's, yeah, let's do it on, uh, let's plan for Tuesday. Because, honestly, this is taking a lot longer than I thought. And, uh, and I don't want to push it. I can't, I can't push it too far. I appreciate that. Thank you. We'll plan for plan for Tuesday because that's my going to be my next planned stream. I don't want to push it too far. Uh, Momo Hitsuyaga says I got uh, Hitsugaya. Sorry, Momo Hitsugaya says I got hurt at work and they would do nothing for me until I lawyered up. And the first lawyer wanted me to set, settle for five hundred dollars. Well, don't settle for five hundred dollars. <laughs> Get a lawyer who's willing to fight. They'll help you. All right, so we're going to jump ahead a little bit. I he, Real quick, so far we've listened to three separate interactions that took place immediately in the immediate aftermath of Leona coming out as trans. And what we have seen is an incredible caginess from this manager, this manager being completely unable um, to... Um, to respect boundaries, this manager completely unable to actually articulate anything that Leona was doing wrong while also implying um, very loosely that there were issues with Leona's employment and also while, uh, while invading Leona's privacy multiple times. So I, what I want to do is I want to jump ahead and hear some of these other ones. For example, we're going to jump ahead just a little bit, and we're going to listen to the conversation about dead names. Now, for those who are watching who are unfamiliar with the term dead name, a dead name is, the, uh, is a uh, sort of slang term that is used by trans people. Um, it's not even slang. That's the wrong way of doing it. It's a term that is used by trans people to refer to your old name. 
Um, the history of this word uh, actually comes from uh, the fact it, it was actually a really dark joke, which is that uh, your dead name was the name that they will call you by when you're dead, meaning that uh, at the time, trans people were not respected as who they were, and their families, who did not respect them for being trans, would call them by their dead name uh, uh, when they died. Um, and uh, it's really depressing, isn't it? Uh, uh, nowadays, people don't really use it in that exact same way, but rather they mean it's the name you no longer use. But that's actually its historical root. It's, it's her historical root was as a slang term for saying that that's the name that your family is going to call you by when you die because so many people were not accepted by their families, which is really unfortunate. Um, and there was an allegation that there has been a repeated issue, and we've even seen this. However, to be fair... It's a little more understandable, to be fair to this manager, it's a little more understandable if you fuck up and use a dead name uh, if the name in front of you that you go to look at hasn't been changed yet. We can, we can acknowledge that. And I want to be clear. Um, sometimes dead naming happens, especially if somebody knew you for a long time by that name. If somebody knows you for a long time by your old name, sometimes there are accidents. And most of the time, trans people really don't care. I got dead named a lot when I first came out, both by people who were malicious and by people uh, who were well-meaning but just kind of messed up. I I have gotten dead named in in like the last year, which is insane given that I've been transitioned for all for I've been like fully and publicly completely and utterly transitioned for like nearly ten years now. But somebody. Uh, an old family member just kind of fucked up out of the blue and it was very weird, but it didn't, I didn't get mad about it. Nothing happened. It, it was just like, okay, whatever. Dead naming is the weakest form of transphobia. Sometimes when people go out of their way to refuse to acknowledge your name, it's actually incredibly hurtful. It is literally saying, I don't believe that you have a right to your own identity. And it is very dehumanizing. To, take, to say you don't have a right to decide what you are called, I get to decide what your name is, is incredibly dehumanizing. So, yeah. Let's listen to this. Uh -oh. I was trying to pick Leona, but it swings you back to Ray in Teams. Yeah, it might take a while for everything to sync up, just because, okay. you know, I don't know why. <laughs> and then the, the Ray uh, name will just disappear? Or will it be, Hopefully. like, fine? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And stuff like this, like, if you're, you don't have to do this work. It really was. It's it's Ash. job to do, to help us and things like this. Like, for instance, the new people that I don't expect them to put tickets in. Um, and they Ash. can really help, like, prioritize things. Right, right. So, like, one thing right? doesn't get switched before something else that kind of puts me in a exact situation I mean, so. exactly yeah like just be transparent about it i mean we're here to help and just move things along as smooth as possible um so just just reach out that's that's literally our job <laughs> to make things easier on you guys ed mcstinko says god damn it that really sucks demon mommy you deserve more conscientious family members oh they're my family members are usually the family members that i still associate with are really good about it, it was literally just an accident um just from somebody who i hadn't talked to in a while you know but yeah um, so. Sometimes people mess up. Most of the time, it doesn't mean anything. Um, there's like this stereotype that trans people like freak out if you ever uh, say the wrong pronoun or mess up their name. It's literally just not true. Of course, there have been some trans people somewhere who've, who've like reacted poorly, but the vast majority of trans people take it perfectly in stride, just like anything else. It's when it's it's when it becomes deliberate or careless that it becomes an issue or dangerous. But I think everything should be set. Um, the asset browser should be switched. Actually, have you tried the asset browser? I am still not switched on the browser, but you can still look at, look yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, um, it's using my old name, but so it won't, it won't <laughs> switch automatically. That one won't switch. So it. it's, it's no, it's, it's manual. So, um, I put you on the email thread, but it has to make you an account. I don't know. It, it, he has to put you into the system and give you permissions to do it on the other name. Um, okay. All right. 
that's why. So I would just stick with Ray um, until it comes up. He will contact you. Excuse me. He will contact you um, to you know put in your password and all that. So you, you should be good. And in all this, I would encourage. Obviously, you know this is a lot to switch over. Um, please be patient with people. Overall, there's a lot of knowledge switching and. <laughs> please be patient with people. Leona has been nothing but patient with people. Why would you need to lecture her about being patient when you just said you should stick with your old name? No, actually, that doesn't make any sense. While you wait for IT to make a change in the system, you should stick with your old name? Why would you ever even suggest that? That's, that's stupid. Just tell people what your new name is and let them use it. Do you think that people, when they're using your name, they like are like, oh, yeah, uh, let me go check the IT backend files real quick. No, they go by what you ask. That's so silly. Um, I know you've been anticipating this for a very long time, so you're like, go, 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 go. <laughs> right? well, yeah, but I, I get it. So just... What? What the fuck? What? Um, be transparent, you know, let people get things... Hi, yes, I've been pre preparing to trend. I've been preparing to transition and now I am doing the paperwork necessary to transition. Uh, and then your manager's like, well, I know you expect it to go really fast. And you just want the whole world to change for you because you're trans. I am sure you want everything to change just for you in a moment's notice. But actually, you know, it takes time for an IT ticket to go through. So maybe just don't rush. And then the trans woman's like, huh? What? I was just filing my paperwork. Chance to kind of for the dust to settle. Yeah, that's, basically. That's, that's, I mean, anytime anybody changes the name, if you get oh, married or whatever, it's, yeah. <laughs> um, it's the same thing. So um, I guess I can just do, do some busy work until this all passes. No problem. Okay, perfect. And, and if you're you're done or whatever, we can revisit that list and see what else we have. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also have plenty of other things that uh, my list is like ten thousand deep, <laughs> so <laughs> I can definitely use uh, an extra pair of hands. Sure. So, all right. Cool. cool. That's good. Trans Peak says, this is horrible. My my name change at work had a ton of IT issues, but my manager was just so cool about it. I even kind of lost it talking to her and vented angrily, and she was really understanding as to why I was upset that there were so many issues. Yeah. Isn't it amazing that managers can just choose to not be extremely weird and prejudiced and can just re un understand? Hey, um, if you're changing your name, the process can be really annoying. Let me help you with that because that's literally your fucking job as a manager. If you're a fucking manager, if you're supposed to manage shit. But keep in mind that most managers, they seek out the manager job because they're like, ooh, this is a job where I get to sit on my ass and make other people do work for me. And if they don't do it, then I get to tell them, you're fired, you're fired. That's the like mentality of most people who seek out middle management positions. Thank you. Later. Bye. This around 1.15, And spend some time going through the browser to pick out images. Uh, I just bookmarked them for now, uh, just because you find things that like trump other images, and yeah, I just I mean I just wanted to get everything that I wanted to download in a row. Uh, I just went to go download them, and I could not download any images from the browser. Uh, I went to go refresh the pages that I had tabbed and bookmarked, and uh, I was taken back to the main login where I could not view any images at all. So uh, I lost about the past hour and a half, two hours of work. Um, I'm blocked from being able to continue that. Uh, I just messaged Alpha that to let her know. Uh, I spent some time looking for images. Uh, I lost them upon refreshing the page. I was not able to download them. Uh, I thought refreshing the page would fix the issue. Uh, now I am not able to view any images at all. So I just said I'm going to spend some time organizing my local files and cleaning my hard drive until I can continue working um, and to let me know if I need to contact anyone to get it fixed. Uh, as a side note, uh, I did get an email about doing an unconscious bias training course that addressed me by my dead name. And it, oh. it used my old email. Well, that's cool. Everybody, we need to do trans sensitivity training. And in your trans sensitivity training, they don't even bother the one thing that you actually already completed the paperwork on. You complete the paperwork to get a new email address, and then they send you a trans sensitivity training that refers to your old name. Incredible. It, fucking incredible. That's all. I just thought it was funny. I mean, like, 
I will not take responsibility for lost time. I refuse. The anxiety that is the undercurrent of the situation is that I'm going to have to defend that position. Hopefully I don't. Hopefully everyone just sees this for what it is. Uh, nice. Also, the the fear... I want you I want to point out that you can see through that as this progresses through these recordings through the interrogation you can actually hear and perceive the fear that is going through Leona's mind in all of this which is what the manager is trying to do it's incredibly obvious that the manager is trying to make Leona feel like she is looking like she has to look over her shoulder at every moment that this manager is hoping that Leona will just go away. Psychological and emotional manipulation. Still feel the need to protect myself. The days almost over at this point. It was incredibly extremely wise choice given everything else that happened. I could have been organizing my hard drive from the beginning. But this is what happened instead. Um, that's it. Talk to you later. Um, Ash and myself want to make this the easiest as possible, okay? And not just for this moment, but longevity over time. What he has suggested for me, and I agree, is we do a fresh restart on your computer. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to remove, I mean, obviously, I'm going to give you your time to um, save out all your files, and we can... I am the one who first suggested this solution directly to the producer, Ash. That's who Ash is. Elphaba does not know that the idea to wipe my computer and just set me up as though I was a new employee came from me. The deal is it's going to remove, I mean, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Middle manager moment. I'm going to explain the solution that you came up with and gave to the producer to, to back to you. Oh, man incredible i'm gonna give you your time to um save out all your files and we can figure that out whether that's on each vault um or we get you a usb drive legendary um, something like that to save everything out but the whole point is is to give you a fresh restart okay. um just like a new employee right that means none of the old information will carry over that's that's names that's everything right okay. day one leona starting again okay sounds good um, um now, I guess, uh, sorry. uh now i'm going to give you the time to save out your products and that means I do not want you to take your computer in yet. Okay. Okay. I want you to spend the time. Make sure you scrub your machine. I know you're actually very thorough, very good at like data. And I know where, right where all the important stuff is. Well, not, it was, it, most time will take in copying it rather than finding it. So. Yes. Will, save uh, save everything. Right. Um. If we need to find space on each vault, we can. But um. Just save all the things. <laughs> uh, I, I guess I'm guessing I'm not able to use any of my storage devices to do that. Uh, uh, let me let me contact IT to figure that out for you. Okay. Um. They may actually say, hey, use one that we give you. Which is which is fine. I'm going to give you the time to do all of this work, um, which is saving it out, getting the drive. Now, when they when you do take it in, um, you'll take in a whole the machine. They're going to scrub it. They're going to put in your new graphics card. We're going to have to meet up with IT guy. Okay? And IT guy, a wonderful person, and in fact, um, is very empathetic to your situation okay. and um, very kind. He wants to make sure that this is done correctly, and I, I respect that. And so, I want to take those steps as well. Um, once IT installs all that. You know, they will need to be another meetup with IT guy. part of his team, and they will. It's just like when you got hired, right? They're gonna have yeah. to set everything up again. Um, but that will negate any like oops here or this here. This is not connecting. Like, yeah, yeah, that's. I, I really like to. If it just gets back to the point where I can just like make sure things are working instead of like hiccuping on every step, that would be yep. exactly what I'm asking for. Um, no, this it's actually so funny that that Zenimax Bethesda's internal process is actually so so fucked up that it is better to just create a new person from scratch under a new identity than just changing some settings. That is, that speaks to a totally borked backend. Incredible. What kind of system requires all of this for a name change? One that was slap shotted together by a bunch of people who uh, all are, are rushing for time and, and gluing things together with, uh, with children's glue. This is, this is the best way and also it introduced he mentioned it will introduce things later like there could be a hiccup right and it reverts something reverts back or it pulls on the old name and not the new name so sure. let's uh, let's do this the right way um and just uh, just so you know i've got about 700 gigs what of data all the gigs well i don't throw <laughs> things away <laughs> yeah actually you're like i looked at my drive and uh i have like five terabytes or something and three of them are done 
So I mean, a lot of it, I'm sure, is just filming that I just why delete it, you know? Um, yeah. But still, it's it's okay. Uh, so let's take a terabyte drive. I could use for that, but if I need to use one for my tea, that's fine too. Okay. Let's let's take an opportunity to start scrubbing through that and finding out what you want, what you don't want, because no matter what, that's gonna take forever. Um, if it's not, it's if it's not a value to you in the future, just maybe remove it. Um, but let me, I'll reach out to IT to find out about that because okay. most they're pretty they're pretty picky about drives. Yeah. Yeah. Because they don't, don't want to introduce bugs. Any toes here? I just wanted. Yeah. yeah. So uh, okay. Um, just, uh... They also probably. Let me talk with them. They might be able to just keep it on that. No, they would have to pull in another hard drive. Okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll sync back with you. If anything, let's just um, let me sync with IT, start cleaning, and know that over the next three days. Um, Secular Social says, imagine what we could do to change all of this if the public's reaction to Bethesda discriminating against trans people was even a tenth of the stupid backlash that, that conservatives gave to Bud Light. True! True! Actually, unironically true! Imagine if people just actually made the fuck fun of Bethesda about this shit forever. Imagine if liberals and leftists and progressives actually had a sense of solidarity and stood together for things that they believed in. Imagine if our entire, the entire left political sphere wasn't full of a bunch of liberals going, ooh, trans people, well, Republicans get mad about those, so maybe we should get mad about them too. Oh! Wouldn't it be amazing? It'd be like almost like we'd get to live in a good world. We're going to be going through this, okay? Now, I just ask that let's try to keep it as clean as possible if I need to be in the loop 112%, okay? Um, so that we can make this easy okay. and time it correctly, okay? Mm -hmm. All right? Uh, so, yeah. Uh, if I, I mean, I've got everything here that I, this is totally necessary. Uh, if I just took out, well, it's about 300 gigs of video that I took probably over the past however many two and a half years <laughs> so right. that's, that's a big chunk of it's everything. a huge chunk yeah, yeah. Uh, okay cool um yeah and okay sounds good um so just hold tight and i'll get back to you sounds good the cool. next moves cool all right all right let's jump ahead let's see what's next All right, this one looks like it's going to be important. Let's hear I felt a little uncomfortable when I was in that room. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. And it was like, and I don't know if it was. Um... It's not a conversation I should have been a part of at all. <laughs> like, there's this, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a kind of a like group meeting. It's like, no, take this offline. This is a technical thing that needs to get worked out. We don't need to be talking about the nuances and details in a group meeting. Yeah. Stop, take it offline. No. Okay, the context for this one, by the way, here we go. I'm gonna read the context for this, here we go. Discussing with my manager's boss about certain events that he was present for. This one in particular is when we were dis when we were discussing my name change being brought up in front of multiple people during a group discussion, some of whom had never interacted with me and were not aware that I was transgender. So El Fava, El Faba, El Faba brought up issues with the name change in a group setting for literally no reason. And and El Faba's boss is agreeing that that was inappropriate. Holy shit. Oh, okay. So, and that's, that's when I basically said- Do you see? Hold on, I wanna take a moment here and just point out, do we see the pattern of what's been going on in all of these interactions? That there is a constant, there is constant deliberate uh, uh, decisions being made that put Leona in the most embarrassing and vulnerable position possible while also persecuting Leona for work that for not doing work correctly when all objective measures when she was analyzed by a by her by the manager of her manager the producer m analyzed her work her work came out perfectly fine her velocity was just fine what we have here is a manager using her position of petty power to continually terrorize and ruin the life of this trans person mysteriously beginning in the weeks that they discover that she's trans. Do we see the pattern here? The humiliation, the attempts at humiliation, the uh, attempts at introducing danger into this trans person's life. This is categorical workplace discrimination. And it seems like the 
uh, the the man the lead manager uh, here acknowledges that this is incorrect and acknowledges that this is happening. Guys, this is not a Ash. issue. This is not Alphabet. an issue. Okay, this is an HR and an IT issue. This we went to HR and said, changing my name. Great. Things start to happen after that. Okay. Now, communication needs to IT in order for IT to seamlessly transfer all of your dead name stuff to your new name. Right. It should have been thoughtful at a timeline given and should have been executed to the best of their ability. So I... this is the boss of the boss acknowledging that this has been a needlessly uh, massive process, that none of this should have been made public, that uh, that that F Alphaba uh, uh, was way was was out of line to bring this up as an issue to multiple people, and that she brought it up in in front of multiple people for no reason. That it was an HR and IT issue only. And every time you hit a roadblock, okay. Now I can see where the producer and the lead would get involved and say, Lee is hitting roadblocks. Lee can't get her work done. We need to get the work done. IT, HR, fix it, please. It is not Ash, in trying to get into your work or into your systems and try and help you solve it. Um, yeah, they didn't, they didn't go to IT or HR, they went to me. Uh, and as though like, I was being transparent with them, as though there's like this, something I was keeping secret when I, I told, I literally told HR and both of them all at the same time. Yeah. Uh, and the situation's like where every morning, for, for a week and a half, I wasn't able to work. Uh, I was locked yeah. out of the editor. And yet every morning during the storm, I was asked for the progress on my shots. And it was like, you know, like, <laughs> do I have to, do I, do you, you're going to make me repeat this every morning. Every morning I have to figure to bring this up. You know, um, it was, it's, it was not a comfortable place to be, uh, especially since I felt like I did everything in my power to um, make it clear and simple and avoid the situation that ended up happening. Um, I'm just, I'm typing, I'm just typing. Imagine that getting hackled by your boss for not doing enough work, getting your medical history pried into, getting your medical future pried into, and then every single day when you go into work having to relitigate the same problem that isn't on your plate. It's not your problem that IT and HR are fumbling the bag. This is the boss of the boss acknowledging that that this should have been taken directly to HR and IT and that it shouldn't have been relitigated every single day with Leona, who is also being targeted uh, for not performance when she's having to waste time dealing with an issue that's not her problem. Ridiculous. Outrageous notes about like the specifics like every morning um you know reminded of the fact that the whole technical uh changes were not <laughs> being met mm -hmm. and that you were in the middle of it you were not causing it not a great way to start every day <laughs> yeah, yeah. um not to mention having to look at my old name on the screen which yeah. i was like i i had to hear it i had to hear through messenger from people because they were seeing the wrong name yeah uh, this is after spending a lot of time mentally preparing myself yeah um and i understand that's more the personal side of things but i can't if there's, there's overlap affects my ability to Fortnite says, wait, so all this all happened because her boss wouldn't take this to IT? No, her boss kept kicking the issues that IT was having. Having IT kept running into various roadblocks, and Elfaba would basically make Leona do the work. Elfaba, who's the manager, instead of saying, IT, you need to take care of this, I'm the manager telling you what needs to be done, Elfaba would be like, Leona, oh, you're causing problems again. Go talk to IT. Ugh, you're causing problems again. And the and here we have the boss of the boss. The uh, I can't remember the name of his position. Um, this is El Faba's boss is saying, no, this shouldn't have been dropped onto you. This is that management should have ironed this out with HR and IT. You you submitted your name change. You did the paperwork you were supposed to do. It should have been taken care of. And is also acknowledging you sh that that Leona shouldn't have had to keep seeing her dead name. Focus, it kills my momentum, and I can't. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say just. I was gonna actually say that. You know that I don't know how you feel. You know, like some people go, oh, I know exactly how you feel. I don't. I really don't. I don't know what that's like to want to change um, and feel out of place and see your name that you're trying to put behind you, and it just hits. I don't know what that's like. The, okay? the closest I can I, come is to say that it's like getting. You're finally able to breathe, and someone says, "Can you hold your breath just a little longer?" It's it's like. You don't get it. Um, um, or it's, you know, your wife dies, and then everybody's wishing you happy anniversary on your anniversary, and you're like, um, thanks. You know my wife's dead, right? Yeah. I don't, really, I don't really need to be reminded every single time. I'm trying to deal with the death of my wife, and to see Facebook pictures of me and my wife just send me in a you know, tailspin mm -hmm. every time I see it. That's a great example, because that's a technical thing. That is, it's not like it's somebody who's being malicious. It's just a, yeah. Remember that? Sure. Remember that. Okay? Mm -hmm. It isn't necessarily that people are being malicious. 
there has to be a level of understanding, however, um, that, yeah, I think I have to understand and make the effort. Um, but I get it. Um, I don't. I love how Demon Mama has not heard the name El Faba before. Well, I keep messing it up. I am not a wicked person. I didn't even know it was from that. So, yeah, I live in apparently a sheltered existence. <laughs> I don't know if I agree with you in your perception of the situation, but I respect that perception is reality and you're feeling something. I think it's important to take note of Oswald's knowledge of the situation going into this conversation, since it is based on what he has been told by El Faba. It is interesting insight into how she has been shifting the blame for her behavior onto my irrationality. Apparently, Oswald thinks I have an issue with hearing the word transition, which is absurd. Whether I whether I feel like I transitioned as far as I don't know, think I did anything guy. wrong at all. Um, I just don't think that I don't think I should have been thrown into a meeting with a one-on-one -on -one with somebody I've never spoken with before. It was already I've already been outed to. I, that's kind of you know. Um, no, oh, I, okay, okay, I'm kind of getting it now. So even if it wasn't the word itself, okay, which is an unfortunate choice of words, maybe? Well, it's not even, they, they said it did nothing wrong, but they're working off the information they had, they just shouldn't have had that information. That's, that's, I, I don't know how many times you need to say, like, this needs to be in my control. I can't just have, I don't want people just telling everyone, you don't tell other people willy-nilly what they're going through medically. Yeah, sure, sure. You don't do that. Um, yeah, so. It's like, hey, can you pack up their, um, you know, so, you know, okay, I don't even want to make another excuse. Another example. Okay, but, if, if, IT guy. if one, you, just help me work through this, sure. okay, like, how could it have been handled differently? So. Um, one of our employees um, changed their name, and so their um, their game account isn't working properly. Um, oh, no problem. I'll just I'll just give her a call and I'll work through the details. Now, I mean, I just set that up in such a way they didn't say, "Oh, Lee is trans. Yeah. Lee has changed her name because she's trans, and so you need to help this trans person change everything in her game account." I think that was used with like this idea that putting that out there is going to expedite things for me, but it was not. So do you think that that's that a conversation was held with IT guy that spoke directly to the nature of the transition, not just a name change in the system wasn't working? True, mixed dizzy. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I mean, I, again, I wasn't on the I wasn't on the brief. To, IT guy. Um, but why individual leads are involved in that process of game accounts and stuff? Well, I've been thrown into a bunch of meetings where I have to have the same discussions with people. It felt a little like. Yeah, I hear you. I yeah, hear you. It's, it's not like a. Uh, it, it wasn't. It, it was. It should have been as you described it. I went to HR. HR goes to IT, and I give them given a time frame. It just gets done. And it just gets yeah. done. Yeah. Uh, it's, it feels. It feels like I felt. And I was really impression that. It's amazing. It's amazing that this Oswald guy, who seems to be very professional, Oswald seems to be professional and not deranged and not super prejudiced. He doesn't seem super informed on trans issues. Like. Th that seems pretty apparent. He just seems like a normal guy who doesn't have a weird bone to pick. And it's amazing how how easy it is to understand. Yeah, you just submit your name change to HR. HR says, okay, IT, change the name. And then the process happens. And if any issue happens, then you kick it back to IT to fix the problem. Why has this become multiple meetings with you with your issues being talked about, with your transition being talked about in front of other people? It's incredible. It's actually amazing how this Oswald guy is able to just cut through it like a knife through like a hot knife through butter. That would be the process. So when it was anything but, uh, on top of having to deal with being like it's told like put, put, put on my feet. Like, well, I should have I should have been more fun about this. Or I should have been more transparent. Who, this is that? Who's, who said that? Alphaba. Alphaba. Said you. That I should have be, that I needed to be more transparent and open with them about, and, and, and then this week, yeah, well, I, I, I literally said that was, there's a lot. I just got my computer back, so there was a lot of little things that needed to get run through before I could get momentum going. Uh, so I just messaged to say that like, microphone issues, sound settings, graphic settings, user settings, syncing with the servers, these are all things that are going to slow me down. So I don't have anything for feedback today. Mm -hmm. but I just wanted to give you an update on where I'm at. Um, I mean, feedback. Are you meant the walk around? Yes, yes, during our daily walk around. This is the message center. I didn't hear anything back. Uh, until after group feedback I wasn't invited to. And then I had a very awkward phone conversation with her where um, I was told it wasn't my responsibility that all tech issues need to go through her. Um, I said there really isn't any tech issues. This is like something I would go to IT about. But it was just this adamant, like, you need to be more transparent with us because it's delaying your work. Um, and you focus on the job and there's no reason for this stuff to be delayed. And I'm like, I'm focused on the job. Um, you know, it was very... Uh, uh, and then during our, our yeah, talk... Notice how much that happens. Everything everything that we've seen in this in meetings with ev with every other person including Alfaba we've seen that Leona appears to be from all we can tell incredibly focused and devoted to this job uh even this manager acknowledges that Leona has been doing everything necessary to try and get this taken care of and yet Alfaba keeps going 
oh, oh, you're not focused. You're really not focused. It's almost like Elphaba is trying to force mistakes so that Leona can be fired. Trying to build the idea that Leona is some kind of like fail slacker when that is just simply not what's happening. I get a message from a teammate asking, or I found out that there was a meeting, there was a meeting I wasn't involved in. Um, I followed up with that with HR. Uh, she came back to me. I didn't get an apology. She just said that it was an email issue. I don't, I don't believe that for a second. There's no way you can have an entire team meeting and just not notice I wasn't there and then call me immediately afterwards. That's not a mistake. Um, following that up, yesterday, I was in the group meeting and I got messages the entire time asking where I was. And I'm just like, Wait, in the, in the morning scrum? In our, in our, we, had, we had a group feedback meeting yesterday. Um, sometimes, sometimes she does individual calls and sometimes she likes to have us all do it in a group. We usually don't know that until like an hour before the meeting roughly. But yeah. um, yesterday was a group one. I was there. And then after the meeting, I got, this is the, I, 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 I said to her very quickly, a summary of all the major events in the meeting. Because I yeah. realized that was the only way I could, yeah. yeah convince her. You were there. Yeah, I was there, yeah. Um, I remember when you said this and that exactly. happened there. Yeah, I, okay, I get that. So, so I just felt like, am I being, what, 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 what is this? Like, I don't understand this, this kind of attention. Oh, I just want things to go. Alphaba? 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 Okay, well, I'm saying it wrong, but I don't really care, so. As quietly as possible, as casually as possible, because in a lot of people in my situation, it's very common for trans people to quit and relocate and start over. But I like this job, and I like what I do. I don't want to do that. Um, no, you shouldn't. That, that's a shame. Yeah. That that is a that is an unfortunate reality, and it shouldn't be. Um, and it's not like you can just go down, like when you're in New York, you just you go to the other ad agency. You know, it's like, you know. It's I gotta move across the country, you know, there's studios that are, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, and you, Hey, let's not even talk about that. Okay. That should never be the option. It's, it's one thing for somebody to say, you know what? Changing my life, and I want to change it entirely. And totally respect that. Totally cool. You shouldn't feel like you have to. That's my, that's my thing on that. And I will say that my goal has been to get out of this team, and I was willing to just sort of, I could, I could stay, I could stay with it for as long as I needed to until I saw an opportunity. I had, but, but part of that, unfortunately, uh, I wanted my portfolio. I, I have leonafair.com. So when I send stuff out and they look me up at Zenimax, they need to be able to see that name. So getting that done was a big part of being okay. able to get this process rolling. And it was really unfortunate that that in and of itself kind of put me in a spot where I needed to make things happen even quicker now. Um, and that's, that's kind of where I'm at with it. I, 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 uh, so like, for example, your LinkedIn name change, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Yeah. Your portfolio name change. Cool. You got the URL. Um, <laughs> so good. Um, no, obviously there's no, no one can go search on Zenimax for you. There's no like employee, you know, searchable public data. But if I'm flying internally, then that's right. That is true. Like, oh, we got an internal application from a Leona Ferrin. Who is Leona Ferrin? Oh, well, I'll, wait, I don't see that in Slack. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> um, now, so that's good. How I love that all of this too, all of this hostility about changing locations when, when Leona is trying to stay in the company, literally Alphaba is just, is just, uh, just just having a dictator moment. Jesus. Now, you know, you know my position in that it should have been communicated. You communicate to HR, HR communicates it to IT. IT says this is how long it's going to take, and they execute it seamlessly against how long it's going to take. Right. Okay. There's a lot of things that your name touches. Okay. I'm not surprised that it didn't go perfectly smooth. Okay. Um, so with that, I have a little bit of sympathy for you know walking in somebody else's shoes. Um, how long did you think that that process should have taken? I was expecting issues because things never go perfect. Um, and that's fine. Uh, I did not think it would take a week and a half. I, I was anticipating two, maybe three days at most. Um, and I, uh, my communications Clarice. were um, kind of gave me that impression too, because I was in touch with just, just like the name change is, is coming. It's going to happen. You know, it's just a heads up just so that, you know, all the, all the systems, whatever needs to be done to get that done smoothly when it happens. Uh, and then I would say that it went a little worse than not smooth. Uh, and, Kind of what really put the pressure on it it was not knowing how long it was going to go on for um and relying on it essentially for being able to get out of the situation that was getting worse every day so it was not really ideal um and i think this guy oswald is trying to help as much as possible alphaba i think is the complete problem both ash and oswald which this guy is oswald um both ash and oswald here have been doing their best it seems um, not perfect, but doing much better. I think it's very clear exactly what was going on here. Yeah, I don't think that, like, three days. And the ultimate thing is, frankly, Alphaba. got involved and wanted to be able to keep working through it. And that just didn't plan, plan out. Um, it, it complicated things. Okay, yeah. so let, let me just, in, in the spirit of walking someone else's shoes, 
Ash, and Alphaba. Are responsible for getting a body of work out the door. Okay. Um, there is a certain amount of work assigned to each individual. Each individual needs to complete that work in a specified amount of time. Correct? Yeah. They need to manage the work. They need to know if someone is going to have downtime. A manager needs to know why there's going to be downtime to just say, I'm going to be down for three days. Well, why? It's a normal question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Normal question. And then how might that communication go so that your manager, and this is where the transparency issue um, and why this is kind of more complicated than just insensitivity. Um, how, without being, without just saying, well, because I'm trans and I'm changing my name, that's why. Okay. I'm, I'm glad you asked. You know, I would have told you, you know, in my own time, but thank you. I changed it with HR and IT. They're going to need to know why you're not working for three days. Okay. Or the week and a half. Okay. Because IT couldn't get right. But how would you, how would that conversation go differently? I don't know what else I could have said, honestly. Uh, no, but, but without saying, okay, that you're changing your name, how would they know why you were down for three days? I don't have a problem telling them that, though. No? Like, it was, like, I, I don't know. I, I'm sorry. I don't know if I understand the, uh, well, there has to be, obviously you want to, you have the right to tell HR, I'm changing my name. Okay. Right. And that's going to, and that's going to start a process. Okay. You have the right to tell HR that you are doing that. You don't have to tell everybody in the company, whatever. It's gonna have to touch other people. Just sure. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I understand that. And I, I was, I was, on, I had everybody on the same page. So like I was being exclusive to HR about this. Uh, I didn't, I wanted, this wasn't a surprise. I wasn't, I wasn't demanding things change now. And I wasn't like throwing this out there because it was, I don't, I don't know. There was no, this needs to happen this way. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was, it was, it was just, this is, this is what I'm going to be doing down the road. What steps do I need to take in order for it to happen smoothly? And this is just how I've been having the conversation with people. Yeah. Um, so this is like, this conversation that we're having right now and kind of like planning, right? This is this a name change. Okay. Regardless of the reason affects a lot of things. Mm -hmm. HR, what's the plan? How, how do we roll this out? Okay. So that everybody that the business, okay. is still going to run smooth. Um, I feel protected and I'm not just being thrown out there, okay, you know, as a as a, as a trans woman with a name change, yeah. okay, can we do it a little smoother than that, please? Okay, how do we roll this out? That's the thing that I think is not smooth here. Now, yeah, there's probably some insensitive conversations being, like, you know, a, a group scrum meeting is no place to be talking about, you know, why you're not doing your work because you're, because of the, like, no, that's, that is basically a take it off line. All right, so I get the, it does sound like there's a lot of insensitivity going on. Intentional or otherwise, I don't know. Being excluded from a group meeting because it was a group meeting and your dead name was on the email that announced that it was a group meeting. Okay, not sure how that could have happened, but my understanding is that because started, group meetings are how the, work around, uh, the walk arounds are going to take place, okay, right now, okay? Um, and if you don't have work to show, it probably was not one of those situations where, hey, where's Lee? I don't see Lee. Buzz Lee in. So there's, there's two sides to that. You, you don't want to be in a situation where they ask you, so Lee, what do you have to, to show us today? Well, I don't have anything. I've been telling you that. Why are you bringing it up again? Which I totally understand. Versus, well, he doesn't have anything to show, so there's no reason for Lee to be in the walk around. Both of those are kind of you know, interchangeable and invalid. Um, it's just the, I, even though Lee doesn't have anything to show, because Lee is having technical problems that is preventing her from actually um, presenting today. There's no reason to exclude Lee from a meeting, part of the team. Right. We just won't ask Lee for, you know, to present today. Yeah. yeah no, what, what Oswald is laying out here makes sense. Basically, what, what Oswald is saying is, what Oswald is coming to understand is that Alphaba basically, um, basically structured it maximally to, uh, to, to, to be insensitive and cruel to, uh, Leona. Um, what basically he's saying the way that it should have been done is if you had a technical issue that you already cleared with the manager, you should have been invited to the meeting as normal. And then the, the manager being the manager should have simply not asked you to present instead of excluding you from the meeting, um, for, for some unknown reason, because you had a technical issue which is not what is done normally. That's what Oswald is trying to say here. Yeah, it's a little bit confused. It's a little bit confusing, but um, what Oswald is outlining is what should have happened and what would have been better and trying to understand what actually happened, which is basically that Leona was regularly being jerked all over the place by this Alphaba person for unknown reasons. The unknown reason being what we all can see with this all laid out for us.
Let's see here. Now this is the this is the next thing that I want to listen to. This is the this is what happens once uh, all of this continues to happen and it is escalated to Bethesda's corporate HR. So that's what we're going to be listening to next. I've I I understand what uh, I believe that we've seen enough of these receipts to understand very clearly that what Elphaba was doing was a protracted, needlessly cruel, extremely insensitive, and clearly prejudiced campaign to try and basically pressure Leona to leave the team without actually saying it. Um, uh, and even Oswald, the boss of the boss, was able to acknowledge this. Um, uh, Leona was subjected to multiple points of pointless humiliation. Leona's private information was made, um, was made public to people even beyond her team on numerous occasions. And Leona's day-to-day -day -day work life, as admitted by Oswald, the boss of the boss, um, was impacted because of Elphaba's decisions. Because of Elphaba's clearly, in my opinion, prejudiced decisions. But this is now, we are going to jump forward to the portion in which uh, Leona escalated this to uh, Bethesda Zenimax corporate HR. As you can see, there's quite a date jump. This jumps a few months forward. So in September of 2021, I contacted Bethesda corporate because I felt like the studio's human resources was not taking my issues seriously. I shared with them everything that I shared with you, the recordings, screenshots, everything. Um, they responded by viewing me as a liability that they needed to get rid of. And it was also at this time that I was put under management with Oswald. Um, thankfully, thankfully. Okay, so we now hear, in her own words, she was transferred out of El she was transferred out of Elphaba's control and into the basically under uh, uh, Oswald. And she clearly seems to believe that Oswald was a way more reasonable person to work with, which is what we saw. In in even just one interaction, comparing how Oswald talked about things to the way that Elphaba was treating her, you can see the approach is completely different. You can see that uh, Elphaba was incredibly weird, invasive, and... Um, insensitive about trans issues while oswald even though it was pretty obvious that oswald isn't like a trans expert but was easy was able to understand a basic level of human respect for leona's issues so i think that speaks for itself because under his management i blew it the fuck up i wasn't being blocked anymore and my velocity shot through the roof because i was working for someone who didn't so now she's saying that once she was transferred under uh, under Oswald, she was able to do a ton of work, and that her her uh, her internal performance stats, that velocity measurement, went way up when she was working under Oswald because she was no longer being sabotaged at every turn. Now we don't get to see that. There's she could be lying, but we have no reason to assume that that's not true, especially given that everything that we have seen. That at no point in this entire thing has Elphaba ever been able to demonstrate that Leona actually wasn't doing her work. In fact, she didn't even allege it. She just implied it and beat it around the bush while making Leona's life difficult. I care that I was trans. So I had my surgery scheduled for March of 2022 and July of 2022. My surgeries were going to come in two parts. Um, I needed to have both surgeries done. Um, I couldn't have the first surgery without the second one. It would have been very unhealthy for me. They would have been leaving screwdrivers in me and shit. They need those back. <laughs> um, but like, I mean, that's, it would have been putting my health at risk to have one surgery and not the other. I needed both. But then in January of 2022, I was put under a performance improvement plan because Alphaba was allowed by corporate to do my yearly review. And she gave me straight one. Wow. So even though Leona was transferred under Oswald, uh, corporate still had Elphaba do the year review. That is disgusting. That is fucking disgusting. What a horrible decision from corporate. 
Why would she be allowed to do the review? Who knows? Maybe it was a paperwork issue. Maybe basically, maybe uh, maybe there was no way. Uh, I don't know why that would be the case. That's deranged. That sounds like, yeah, that sounds like bu bureaucracy garbage. Across the board. She said I didn't do my work. She said that I was rude in meetings, that I was uh, made inappropriate comments in public workplace forums. Dozens of vague statements that were criticized. This is where Leona should definitely have a lawyer. I hope that Leona's able to get a lawyer because those allegations are really serious, and I bet that I bet that a lawyer could make sure that justice is done here. Systems of my work ethic and character, uh, all of which were lies. But corporate saw me as a liability, so that didn't matter. It was a way to get rid of me. In the same conversation, I was pulled into a group meeting with human resources that included Zenimax Online Studios human resources and Bethesda Corporates human resources, and they extended to me a one-time offer, wherein if I agreed to resign and release them from any potential discrimination lawsuit, they would pay for my Cobra premiums. They were holding my- This is what we saw earlier, which by the way, that is absolutely a, a technically legal hush money situation. Being like, okay, um, uh, you, you've been a huge headache for us because you, you've, you've, you've blown the whistle basically. Now keep in mind, all of this happened before Leona went public at all. Leona had not brought any of this public. Leona did everything by the book. All of the evidence that we have seen here is Leona presenting that I went through the internal processes. I talked to HR. I talked to HR's HR. I talked to the HR HR HR. She went through all of this, every th single step. She tried to fix the problems that she was having all while this Elphaba person was, uh, was undercutting her the entire time. And in the end, because again, let's just remember, corporations speak one language and it's money. They wanted to buy her, they wanted to buy her silence by saying, we'll make sure that you can still get your surgeries as long as you sign this paperwork that says that you will not bring a lawsuit against us for the nightmare that you've been uh that you've been put through by our employees over the last you know two years that is disgusting that is so disgusting injuries hostage to coerce me into resigning i refused I spoke with Oswald. And by the way, you can't just, th th this does not work in the same way against someone who isn't trans, just so you know. Because if, if they tried to do this against somebody who wasn't trans, what are they gonna offer? Hush money? Oh, then it becomes an actual problem. Okay, we'll pay you if you stay silent. Then it's a legal issue. What they're using this because they know that she needs trans healthcare. They are, it is, it is, it is as, as prejudiced as it gets on a corporate level. And I asked him because he was my manager now. He would be the one deciding whether or not I passed that review. And he told me very simply that if I continued to work the way that I had been under him, I had nothing to worry about. But I was worried anyway. Corp Oswald said, you've been working really well. You have nothing to worry about. But corporate intervened. Corporate clearly wanted me gone. So I doubled down. I didn't give them an inch. I worked day and night. Oswald sent out an email involving everyone where he said, not only did I pass the performance improvement plan, but I excelled and I overshot my velocity requirements. It was the complete opposite of what Elphaba had been saying. If I wasn't being managed by Oswald during this time, Elphaba would have gotten rid of me and I wouldn't have gotten my surgeries and I would have killed myself. My goal in saying that is not to be dramatic, it's to make a point that trans healthcare saves lives. There is a measurable suffering going on inside of someone dealing with gender dysphoria. And if you don't have a point of reference for that, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. I, I can't even imagine. But uh, people kill themselves over it. They kill themselves over it every day. And, and maybe that's not the path that would have gone down, I can't say. Like, I don't, I wasn't there, it didn't happen, so I don't know. It wouldn't have been healthy for me. I know that, and I can say that with absolute certainty. When I came back from my first surgery, I just want to point something out that that Leona, because of something, Leona didn't do anything wrong. All that Leona did 
was say, I'm trans, I'm going to change my name, and I'm going to get back to work, okay? Just let me change my name so that I can live my life as an individual person. Because of the derangement of one pathetic middle manager at ZeniMax Bethesda, and then because corporate, of course, wanted to pay hush money instead of fixing any actual problems, now Leona has been put into a position where she has to try to justify her completely understandable actions, where she has to lay out her entire life, her dead name, her horrible experience she had over the last two years for any hope at justice. And I just want to point out that that's the state of affairs when you live in a culture that's as prejudiced as this. And you want to know the craziest thing about it? The simple truth is that it would have been cheaper for Bethesda Zenimax to just do the name change right in the first place. And that's the key in this particular situation. When you live in capitalism and all of these companies only speak one language of money, then you have to show them just how expensive it gets if you can't show someone who's trans basic respect. So I truly hope that Leona goes and, and pursues justice to the greatest degree so that Zenimax and Bethesda can get it through their thick skulls that it really would have just been so much easier to just put the process in place and not... And, and you want to know what would have been cheaper for them? Firing El El Faba. The manager who's derangedly uh, uh, acting out of incredible cruelty uh, to an employee who is otherwise performing above uh, above requirements. That's a manager that's sabotaging the project. That one time offer was still on the table. So I signed. And I signed because I was terrified. I wish I didn't. I wish I wasn't so scared. I wish I still wasn't so scared, but I signed because if that one-time offer was still on the table after oh. I proved indisputably that I was being targeted by. That's why there's not a lawsuit. Ooh. Well. Alphaba. Then corporate was going to find a way to get rid of me no matter what. And not even Oswald was going to be able to stop it. So I, was, so I signed. And then I was sad for like a year. I wish I put this video out sooner, but it... I was sad. Oof. And I don't really have an excuse other than that. She laid it out. She said it was either take the de the deal or suffer from dysphoria, potentially killing herself. Yeah. Oof. Legal challenges take years? Well, yeah. I mean, that's what they gamble on, you know? That's why it's important to have solidarity. I mean, I'm not going to say I blame her for signing. I understand why. That's why they, they offer the hush money. Because, uh, you know, you don't want to have to deal with a giant corporation with a team of lawyers making it as difficult as possible. However, you also have to be able, you also have to recognize that um, with support, calling their bluff is possible and it can lead to changes. If it becomes expensive for them, they it still costs them money to pay their lawyers. And if that cost gets so much that it's damaging the profit of their project, even if you don't win in the end, it'll make them think twice. But again, that's a lot to put onto one person. That's a lot to put onto one person. Everyone, we have now looked through all of the receipts we have now gone through the nitty gritty of this situation. We have, we have heard uh, outside interpretation and we have seen the receipts ourselves. I think it's fairly obvious exactly what went on here. What happened was that ZeniMax Bethesda has a completely busted and out of date system for name changes that Bethesda does not have an internal, uh, have a, a uh, well-educated internal staff when it comes to trans issues. But on top of that, what's worse is that a middle manager was able to take advantage of the systems at ZeniMax Bethesda to torture uh, and, and torment a single trans employee based on her own judgment. Some people would call that prejudice. 
I would call that prejudice. Um, that's what it looks like to me. Um, and on top of that, that at the end of the day, the, the answer for Zenimax Bethesda was to specifically go out of their way to leverage tr a trans person's health insurance, a trans person's medical needs uh, uh, to buy legal silence. And I think that's pretty goddamn bad. I think it's pretty goddamn emblematic of the state of affairs in these industries on the state of affairs for workers who happen to have any sort of marginalization. By the way, uh, can you imagine just, just for people who can't really, for those people who really struggle to have any sort of empathy with trans people, can you imagine if on the table was your, your cancer treatment or your wife's cancer treatment if they're on your insurance, on your corporate insurance? Can you imagine if you had to choose between uh, uh, between accepting the fact, uh, that nothing was going to happen to the person that tormented you for no reason over the course of multiple years, uh, uh, uh that nothing was going to happen to that person at all, that you were not going to get any justice. And, uh, but if you didn't sign that paper, then you would, um, then, then, uh, you could be fired and end up not actually being able to have your cancer treatment because that's what was happening here. Okay especially uh, given that this seems to have happened during the period that the first surgery had already occurred. Just terrible. And keep in mind, all of this was so unnecessary. None of this ever even had to reach this point. If there was a system within Bethesda Zenimax uh, uh, for, getting, for tr making it easier for trans people to just change their name, None of this would have had to happen. None of the bad PR, none of the misery, none of the wasted time and wasted money. It is in the interest of these companies to build systems that treat people like some level of human. Daedalus Media says, a company that I used to work for did the exact same thing to me over my chronic illness. I empathize Im immensely. Yeah, I don't blame her for signing it. It sucks because now there won't be a legal case because of that because of that sign because contracts are insanely powerful in America. It's nice though that this story can get out there and it's nice that this can serve as a warning to people who are considering working for Bethesda Zenimax because now you know what it's like on the inside there. Now you know what their corporate approach is to this particular issue. And all we can hope is that more people get eyes on this so that they feel just a tiny bit of fear and maybe clean up their act on the inside. Trans people didn't choose to live in a world where like five giant gaming companies control the entirety of gaming. Trans people who are incredibly talented, passionate, and hard workers didn't choose to have to... um deal with random freaks like alpha, this Elphaba person, okay? Trans people are just trying to live their lives well. And as we can see here, Leona went above and beyond. Barring future uh, evidence that says that all oh, this was made up, which that will never happen. If she signed the paper, there's no way that Bethesda is going to actually speak on this publicly because they don't want to risk it it it, it uh, blowing up outside of the of what is covered by the contract. But as far as we can tell, we have no reason to doubt that Leona's performance was just fine. We have no reason. Even the recorded account of her manager said that she was doing just fine. So, Zenimax Bethesda lost a incredibly passionate and good worker for what trans people just want to live they just want to be able to change their name and live in peace and guess what their co-workers 99 percent of the time don't care none of the other co-workers seem to have an issue with this it just happened to be that one freak manager I wish the best to Leona, and I think that we can conclude this drama mama with a big fat, what the fuck, Bethesda? What the absolute fuck, Bethesda Zenimax?
Fix your shit. Seriously. I really, I really wish the best for Leona. It does seem like this story is picking up some level of, of, of traction. And I'm hoping that this video uh, will do that. If you have thoughts on this issue, please share your thoughts on this down below in the comments. Make sure you like and subscribe and share this deep dive. Dive. <laughs> deep dive. It's because I'm blaming this on Elphaba. I'm blaming this on the, on the, the witch lady. Anyway, share with your friends. Subscribe down below. Make sure you press like and leave a comment, all right? Seriously. Means the world to me. Thank you so much.